So this is the 2023 Sizzix Halloween release and I love it because there's a little bit of everything, but these things not only work really well together, but they also work well with previous year's collections. And that is always important. Um, but I wanna give a shout out to Lisa Jones. Lisa works uh, for Sizzix and Lisa is the one that I work with to develop this collection, uh, this entire year, of course, this collection. And what's really been great about working with Lisa is besides her creative brilliance of turning uh, an idea that I have into an actual cuttable die, but it's also just the patience of kind of tweaking and refining and fitting as much as we can on a die template. So uh, a shout out to Lisa. Thanks Lisa for really uh, making these releases this year just even better than I ever imagined, especially when I get to work with them and when I see what the makers do. All of those little nuances that we did, you know, whether it was the dies or when we were figuring out um, these big frights or just every little detail is magic. So thank you, Lisa. All right. So here we are with this collection. And the thing to know is that it's not, it's not a big collection. Uh, seven dies, three folders, so a total of 10. But the thing to note is that these dies, and hopefully what you're gonna see in the makes as well, is that they really have great functionality. You might look at it and be like, well, what do I do with this? And that's the whole idea for a live like this. This is about seeing the inspiration, seeing how these products are turned into finished makes. And I think that's the most important thing. I always try to design uh, something a little fallish. So this is kind of my uh, my note to fall. This is the, the artsy leaves. I love this because these are uh, solid uh, leaves and stems. Then we have this one, the layer dots. Now this one real quick, and I only have a couple of pieces because you'll see it really in the makes. But um, the cool thing about this die that, you know, sometimes packaging can't really explain is that this particular background die actually has three three dies there and you can always see on the top there's a framelit a large big and that's a card panel so that one framelit will cut uh, the card panel or this background piece then these two other backgrounds are smaller than that panel so you get that cool reveal but the best part of this is that it can be used many ways so there's your panel then one die is going to cut tiny dots so just by itself this is a great one so maybe you want to do this maybe you're going to put lights in a card or maybe you're going to use the grit paste glow and you just want a couple of little uh, dots or fireflies and you want to use this for a summer card whatever color you put in the background that's what's going to shine through on the dots then you have this panel it's kind of like swiss cheese that has bigger dot cutouts and i do love just the the wonkiness of this there's no particular pattern so you can use them by themselves but you can also stack them together and when you stack them together Obviously, remember this panel is going to be larger than these. So these two fit perfectly, and then you have this outer edge. But when you stack it this way, check out the, like the green dots. You reveal that many green dots. But if you take this top layer and you flip it, you get more green dots in different areas. So if you're creating multiples just by flipping this around, and of course you can flip it the other way as well, you'll just get a different amount of reveal of how many of those dots and the sizes of what they come through, right? If that makes sense. But it's just a fun die, very cool for retro. So not just for Halloween. I actually saw a make on Instagram, I think it was last night, where uh, they used the, the cocktails. Like so it was a cool bar glass and like the retro thin lit and did it in pinks and teals. So this is a great retro pattern. It's also cool for for seasonal Christmas anytime. So just keep that in mind when you see a background die that it's got, even though it's for Halloween, which is why I did it in Halloween colors for packaging, a background die, very, very uh, functional for the rest of the seasons. Then we've got these, I love this one, Big Frights, and these suckers are big. You'll see on the makes, they're big. They're like a full on card front. Uh, I can tell you there is a Christmas set as well, a holiday set coming out same font same scale so you'll have two uh, seasonal words as well but what's cool about this set you have two shadows two words and then these great kind of paper cut icons that can be used hanging off of the words or attached to them just a, a great one and i think it it does have a, a cool crossover you're going to see vintage but you're also going to see some uh, clean and simple makes with that believe it or not then we have halloween night i do love these vintage silhouettes so what's great about this particular set is you get two different scales of these trick-or-treaters these are individual ones so the bigger ones are individual so you can use just one on a make and then we've got this little trio that are connected at a smaller scale you can still go in and snip them apart if you wanted to so you can see like where they touch you can cut these off but then you also have these layered pieces so these little orange pumpkins those are extra dies that are put in there 
that if you wanted to color the pumpkin, maybe you wanted to cut out a face, maybe you wanted to do whatever you wanted, uh, you have that separate pumpkin dye that you can layer on top of it, making it any color you want. I just thought that was a, it, and that's what I was saying when I work with Lisa. Like we have space, I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we just added like little pumpkins? So we go through many versions until we finally sign off. And that's where I think uh, her patience of saying, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> I love that. Then we've got some color eyes. This is Edison. He's not too bad to do, believe it or not. He is a big, happy jack. He's just a happy jack-o'-lantern. I wanted to do something uh, that was not only easy to do, but had such a large scale that you can do things uh, to his, his face to light him up. Knowing that I was going to have grit paste glow coming out, your base layer, that's the yellow, you can put grit paste glow so he glows. And I think uh, Kathy Cowles did a, a wonderful glow uh, with him that she shared on social. You can also use tiny lights. You can put vellum behind it. You can build him and then stick him to the front of a battery operated tea light. And then you can have that tea light flicker behind his face if you're doing a Halloween party. He's a cool favor because he's big enough that he would cover that tea light. And just that, the opening of his, of his face and his expression would light up. And then I wanted to give him a couple of clouds. Why? Well, to be honest, it was random. I really wanted the clouds just because. Uh, as I was doing things, I wanted like clouds for the graveyard. I wanted clouds for these guys, but we didn't have room. And so when we did Edison, we had just enough room. And I said to Lisa, hey, remember those clouds we want to do? Let's put them with here. You could still use them with the clouds, but you can also use them with the other dyes. So sometimes a random idea is just that. It's random, but it still works either way. And then we get into the colorized graveyard, one of my faves. You can see here on this, we've got some different headstones. You can layer them. You've got some cool elements, uh, the urn, and of course that, that iron gate. And the style of those clouds are perfect if you're going to create a creepy graveyard scene. Then we have one of my favorites, Moonlight. And if you watched the demo last Saturday, you know how much I love this particular die. The thing to note about Moonlight is it is designed, uh, inspired by the moon mask, but it is different. It's a wonky kind of circle shape that's got a base uh, and this top layer a bunch of cool flying bats in all of these perspectives, which I love because you can use the bats with all of these. Let's face it, bats flying out of the cemetery, bats flying out of Edison, bats flying overhead with uh, Halloween night. But the thing that we didn't show on the package because I just thought it would be confusing and it would kind of mess up the scene is that you actually get two different moon sizes in here, okay? If you, you see on the art up here, there are two different sizes. That's what you get. I just didn't want to put two on the package because I thought it would just, I don't know, kind of turn into more of a solar system than the whole moonlight. But you do get this size as well as this size moon. And so that's why like these smaller bats would kind of give you the same look and feel as this one. So I do love it. I will tell you this, just kind of a spoiler. This moon is designed to go with two holiday dyes we have coming out uh, next month. So specifically, uh, I wanted that. Is that going to, to change the dynamic of that die if you don't get the moon for next year? No, but I just want you to be aware that even if you're not a fan of the bats and all that, this moon is going to be amazing with a couple of Christmas dies that we have coming out. It's also great. People have, I've seen people take this and turn it into uh, a planet so you can do peace on earth and just change the colors. And you can, I mean, you can turn this into earth very easy just by changing up the colors. But wanted to point that out because sometimes you know, I have to make a decision on the packaging of what I want to do, but it is represented here. It's just sometimes if you're only looking at things on, uh, you know, on social media or online, you don't really get to appreciate that it's got two. All right. Then we've got these folders. These folders are huge fun because I do love having uh, not only 3D folders, but al also multi-level. So we have two 3D texture fades. Uh, awesome cracked. This is so good. I love seeing uh, what can be done with this. And then we have reptile which is, this one's gonna surprise you. I'll show you something in just a minute that, that could surprise you because I do love the fact that uh, sometimes we have just a really cool textures that we have the opportunity to launch in a season, but it's truly a texture that I've wanted to do for an everyday launch and it just kind of gets skipped and gets skipped. So these, they are seasonal. So it's one of those things that if you like either one, you're gonna wanna catch it before it's gone. And then I think, um, an instant favorite, especially if you're a fan of uh, Haunted Mansion, uh, is this one. And this one is Tapestry. This is a multi-level. So the difference between a multi-level and a 3D, it's still thick. It's just not as contoured. Uh, multi-level is actually designed in multi-levels. So you can see a distinct break in the design, whereas 3D is designed to be more sculpted and contoured. 
I love this folder because it does mimic uh, some cool wallpaper that I alluded to last week. This one is done with this folder and I'm gonna demo how it's done because it literally takes seconds to do. But I absolutely love this effect. This of course was Reptile, demoed this one. Also, what I did different on this one that created the shine, because I had a couple people say, well, how, made, how did you make this so shiny? Uh, this isn't actually, I use mica stain as the base and of course oxide spray, but to get this shine, this is Distress Resist Spray. So this is just taking Resist Spray when you're done, spraying it over the top, and then it provides this almost plastic shine to the top. And then we have this one. Take a look at that. That is, that is freaking good right here. Uh, so this is cracked. So this is designed to be kind of a weathered wood uh, vibe. And I just, I love all of these designs. So let's just talk, before I get into this little demo of tapestry, let's just talk about these. And we'll talk about understanding folders and designs. Because again, I think sometimes you look at a packaging uh, for a folder and you already made up your mind whether you like it or not based on maybe one picture that you've seen where you're like, ooh, creepy, I don't like, I don't like green. Okay. If you have metallic cardstock, it doesn't have to be this one, but I do love metallic craft stock because it is a hundred pound cover. So it's very heavy. Uh, it does have a craft core. You can sand it. You can do all sorts of things. It comes in uh, two packs. This is very similar to uh, the eight by eight pads that we had, but this is a thicker paper than what that one was. So what's great about this is it's beautiful for embossing, but there are some things you need to know about uh, this paper before you get into the embossing. What we've discovered with this paper is that the surface does not like to be wet. If you wet the surface of this metallic and you put it in a folder, the stretching and the water actually starts to wear away on this before it dries, which means sometimes it could wipe off. Once it dries, it goes back to kind of being permanent, but I don't really like wetting the front of this. So when you go to emboss with metallic, spray the back of this paper, the craft side, just with a mist of water, that's it, and you'll have no problems at all. But if you're finding that the metallic is kind of wearing off, uh, that's just because it doesn't like to get wet and stretched. If you wet it and you weren't embossing it, no problem. It's just something about when both things happen. But here's the thing to note about these folders and metallic paper. It changes everything. So this one, of course, this is wallpaper. So this is just black. This is tapestry that looks just like wallpaper because we did black cardstock and ink, which I'll demo. But take a look at what happens when you just put it on metallic absolutely glorious and what i've done so this is of course craft stock metallic so this is embossed and once it's embossed i just go in with some distress paint which i've done many many times uh, because distress paint especially black is very fluid it's almost like ink so you drip it on rub it around with a blending tool wait a, a couple of seconds and then start wiping off the excess with a paper towel and you get all that great black antiquing in the details but here's the thing to know about folders and this would be any folders you have not just mine always remember that a folder has two sides it's an innie and an outie and sometimes most folders can be flipped around so you can do the reverse so i'll put these side by side they are totally different meaning this was put in with the metallic up in the folder so my tapestry is raised you can see that design this i put my paper in craft side up so now you can see that's the same raised design but take a look when it's recessed so now your black goes into a whole different part this kind of becomes puffy this tapestry becomes puffy very very cool and this effect like i said it it plays through with so many of your other folders that you just probably don't think about because you always put it in the same way you put it in but you'll get a completely different effect when you flip that paper uh, especially like on things with a multi-level because you get to see that step down and the break. Also play around with color. Just because you see it some way doesn't mean you shouldn't be changing the color. Take a look at this green. Again, metallic craft stock. I love this kind of chartreuse look with that little bit of black. Mm -mm. Great for Halloween. It could also be great for weddings, all sorts of cool things. Believe it or not, it could be wedding. It would actually be really soft and beautiful. And you could do white paint if you didn't want it to be black grungy. You can do white or antique linen and wipe it off and it would give it a shabby chic look, okay? So that's metallic with this one. I'll put that aside because I'm gonna demo it. Now, this one, reptile, take a look. Purple fans, oh my gosh. Reptile in purple metallic is just goodness. I do love it. And it has a very reptilian look when you do it this way. But what if we flip the folder? What if we flip the folder and actually change it up? This is using 
copper. So this is going from uh, this pad. This is, so there's like classic metallics and colors, but take a look at that. So the difference, I'll hold them side by side, is instead of the scales all being raised, now we get the inside lines. And to me, I don't know, this has a completely different vibe. This could be kind of cactusy. It's very Southwest to me. Um, but I love the fact that now we're getting all of that black paint sitting into the pits of that. So again, front and back, totally different. And, and it could be an optical illusion sometimes, you know, where you're like, it looks the same to me. But then when you look at the detail, you see like, nope, those are all like little pillows. And now we get those cool crevices. So play around with that. Does it have to be metallic? No, it could be anything. But it's one of those that sometimes you just don't even think about flipping it over, which brings me to the next one. Cracked. Cracked is beautiful. And when you put it onto other cardstocks like this light teal, it, it changes the whole appearance of it to me. I think that this could be uh, beautiful for Christmas cards in winter because it could have an icy look to it. Uh, you don't have, again, you don't have to use black paint. This would be beautiful with white paint and you wipe it off. As long as you wipe the paint off while it's still wet, um, then the metallic will show through. But take a look when we flip it. Oh man, now it's totally different. This is kind of like wrinkled foil or I don't know, it's almost even like tree bark. I bet if this was uh, done in browns, maybe craft instead of metallic, it has like a just a tree bark kind of vibe to it because all of those cracks have now become wrinkles. And that's just, that is fabulous. So that's just a, and then I wanted to do one in silver but just because I was like, oh, I really wanted to see what it's like in metallic again for Christmas. And I just think it, it becomes beautiful. But yeah, when I look at it, now that I kind of have tree bark on the brain, I can see it used for an ice, a great wrinkle, or tree bark. But again, very like good. It does. It really yeah, does exactly. So yummy indeed. But see, just look at those folders and just flipping them over. This was the idea I had literally 10 minutes before live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did. I did all of these. I was like, I had, I mean, I had gloves on because I had black paint flying everywhere. And Mario's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I just have this idea and I think I could talk about it or I can show it. And when I think when you see it, Seeing is believing, am I right? So, okay. So let's get into this quick tapestry demo and then we'll get into the makes, okay. So the simple thing about a folder, and again, this works for most of your folders, not just 3D or multi-level, but really any embossing folder, is the ability to ink it. And you can try different kind of inks. Um, if you're going to put color, whoa. If you're going to put, let me put this easy, over here. Easy, easy, easy. easy. If you're going to put color in a, fold, in a design, like we did here. And again, we demoed, I demoed this one last Saturday, so you can go back and watch the replay for Distress Halloween. If you wanna put color in the areas, in the recess, I prefer archival ink, which is taking your ink, having a color background. So in this case, we already did like green background. And then I open my folder, I take archival ink. You can use any color archival, but this is an oil-based permanent ink. Okay, so that's why I like to just rub this onto the folder. It's oil-based, so it's gonna stay wet long enough for me to then close it, run it through, and it pushes whatever color into those lines. So that's where those black lines are really uh, prominent. This one, I did hickory smoke archival. So instead of black, because I didn't want it to be super strong, I did gray, which we have a hickory smoke uh, archival. So any color of archival ink, because it's oil-based, something like stays on, it dries too quick. So if you tried this with stays on and you did it, it would pretty much stay on the folder. It doesn't transfer. If you try it with regular distress ink, uh, that tends to bead up so you don't get a really nice impression. doesn't mean you can't do it, but archival really is going to be uh, your jam. So I prefer black soot uh, just because it's really dark. So that's what you do if you want to get the color in there. But that doesn't mean that we can't play around with the idea using other inks. And for that, I do prefer oxide because oxide is a dye pigment fusion. So unlike a traditional distress ink, which is just dye that would beat up on the plastic, the oxide actually clings to the plastic fairly well. And you could do it exactly the same way, uh, depending on what side you wanted to work on. It doesn't really matter. You could ink either side, knowing what we know now about flipping the designs. So this one is, it's actually pretty, pretty easy to do, uh, as long as I had paper. So, hey Mario. <laughs> This is embarrassing. Can you open that top drawer? Uh, third file back, you'll see where it says black cardstock. <laughs> Great. See, it says black right there. Yes. Grab me a sheet of that, please. Sure. This is delightful. And then I'll take that, there you go. Grab me that trimmer right there. 
perfect. Everything was ready for the demo except the paper. Well, there you go, here we are. So we're gonna take this. This is Distress Black Heavy Stock. It's almost suede-like. So I prefer this because it really does just give me like the richest black, but you can use any black cardstock. Um, our yeah, folders. Awesome cardstock. It, I gotta say, when we used this yesterday. Yeah, it has wow, such a, like, wow. has a great suede finish. Really so I'm is. just gonna go to six and a quarter here. It doesn't have a six and a quarter mark, but I can see a box and it's good enough. And then that allows me again to have another piece. I can get three 3D folders out of this. I'm gonna turn it and go to four and a quarter. There we are. And then this one, see, so this one is pretty close to four and a quarter. And then I can flip this to my six and a quarter. And now out of that sheet of paper, I have six and a quarter by four and a quarter, but I have three of them out of an eight and a half by 11. Cause if you quarter cut it, it would just run a little short. doesn't matter if you're only doing a twos, you can do that, but that's how I get three panels. So that was a good, ended up being an okay demo. Thanks. Sure. Um, but this way you'll, you're able to get that full impression, especially if you're gonna cut it apart and then you just have these pieces left from an eight and a half by 11. Oh, so there you have it. Okay. So what we're going to do is take our folder and this is what I was saying about what side do you wanna ink? Well, if we want the flat side to give us the ink, that's the side we're gonna do. Or if we wanna deboss the color, you could ink this side. It really, it's totally up to you. But for this example, where I wanted a lot of that color debossed, I chose the side that has most raised area. And again, you can, you can play it however you want. I have my piece of black cardstock. Uh, would you grab me that spray bottle of water? Thank no, no, I don't need water. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Um, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I don't need it, honestly. I'm gonna take oxide. And what I wanna do is take the ink pad itself and I wanna swipe it over the top. But let me just show you what happens. So if you just drag it over the top, this is a multi-level, you'll see that it hits the highest level first. If that's all you want, great. But if you wanna get color into that, say next level down, don't squish it in, that's bad. All you wanna do is just kind of give it a little, a little twist, a little, little skippity bit on the dismount, meaning I don't wanna grind it in, I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna kind of give it a little, little twist and flick. Do you see what's happening? We're getting some color in there and the more random, the better would be my suggestion because if you over ink a folder, it just looks messy. So the nice thing about Oxide is it does give you open time. So don't feel pressure to, oh my gosh, I've got to hurry because this ink will never dry on this folder. Never, because Oxide can never dry on plastic. So, you know, you could ink this and you can walk away and come back and the ink is still gonna be wet. So unlike archival where you kind of have to work fairly quick, this is good. So once I feel that I have color where I want it to be, I'm just gonna take this and just lightly swipe over the top. And the reason I'm doing this is I wanna pick up any excess ink. So if I have a lot of ink there, I just wanna kind of pick this up. Um, I haven't had good luck doing this with a brayer um, or a blending tool, although you could do that, but I just, that's just not what I like to do. I like to just go direct from the pad. So take your machine, whatever machine you wanna use, I'm just gonna use a fold away. Uh, you can use your Vagabond switch, whatever you want to, to do and I'm gonna have my platform. I don't need to wet this one at all uh, just because this paper is super pliable so you don't need to wet it. Multi-levels are pretty easy to go through so I'm just going to take my piece of paper, place that on the bottom, take my ink side, fold it down. I'm going to go with the fold in and just going to take that, engage it into the machine and then we're just gonna start cranking it. Thanks Mario, my, my whole table like starts to move. Okay, hold on, <laughs> he knew. The, I'm working on a piece of vinyl and it, see, it just doesn't want to go. Oh my gosh. Here. My whole table just moved. This is, this is joyous. I'll just get out the vagabond and we'll be done. It's trying to demo with this on a slippery table. There you go. There we go. Okay. Thanks Mario. We're good. Thanks. The vagabond you just had. Um, yeah. So you're going to run it through once and then once you kind of feel that you're at the edge, you're just going to go the other way. And just a little bit of, of advice. If you have a manual machine like this and you struggle with 3D embossing folders, an electric machine, be that the Vagabond or the Switch Plus, like it just takes it in seconds. Um, it's just different of how the rollers work. But yeah, this, this doesn't help that I'm working on a piece of laminate flooring. Anyway, you get the idea. So once we open this up, this is what we have. It's, it's quite simple. 
and quite amazing in the results. Beautiful. It's just so cool. Now here's the thing to note. Could you do a second generation? Yes, you can. You can do a second generation because like I said, that ink is still wet. Um, would it be as intense? No, but that's okay. Maybe you want it to be a little lighter, a little skippier. This you just rinse off with water. You don't need stamp cleaner. You need nothing like that. This is just going to be water. Uh, the archival one, you would need archival cleaner, but with oxide, like I said, this will never dry on the plastic. So rinse it with water. But this effect is so cool. And what's really nice about this is that that ink, it just has a tendency to kind of beat up almost like chalk or paint would. And it gives you this kind of cool flaring. Uh, if you went in with a blending tool right now, you would actually blend that color. So if you didn't want the contrast, you could go in with a blending tool. I don't, I tend to let it dry. Drying time for this probably is gonna be a few minutes. If you have a heat tool, it would be a few seconds, but that's it. Black paper, deboss the color, and do this with any of your folders. But man, I will tell you like for how, so this is the same color dry. I just wanna show you the difference, okay? See oxides as it dries, it will oxidize. So it's very, really cool that your color starts to kind of get more of that time-worn effect by uh, it oxidizing. Very, very cool. I love it. But that's a, a great way. So you could, again, if you were doing this for uh, just something a bit more elegant, and I always try to, try to connect the dots, you could easily do this, say, with antique linen distress oxide and use white cardstock. And now you would have this beautiful kind of lacy tapestry versus gothic tapestry. That's the thing to remember uh, when it comes to utilizing your, your dies and your folders. That sometimes it's coming out at a season where you might not be interested. And really for people that uh, have no interest in Halloween and don't even bother watching anything, I think they're missing out on some of the coolest products because that's when we kind of get to get our, our creep on a bit. Okay, so Phew. thanks Mario. You're welcome. Yeah, next oh, time really, all. I'm just gonna... I'm just going to pop out the Vagabond and be done. I just don't like to demo the Vagabond because it's been retired and then people get all, all sad about it. Ben, the switch is way too big to even put up here. So let me just close this up. Okay. Now we're on to the makes. And then, sure, thanks. And then this, uh, the folder, again, baby wipe, or you can just wash it off, whatever. All right. So this stuff, yeah. Okay, thanks. Perfect. So all that stuff, if you want, because I know you're going to need a landing space for the makes coming up. So here we go. Let's get into the makes. All right. Cool. So a shout out to the makers. I'm always amazed of what they, what they dream up when it comes to creating with the designs. And I always find it um, fascinating, inspiring, beautiful. I think it's, I'm going to just grab these real quick these over here I'll take those um, I always think it's pretty incredible I just wanted to have some dies here I always like to reference the dies when we're kind of getting in so what I did is I sorted the makes by design I think it's going to be easier for you to see it I think it's going to be easier to uh, review it if you're going to watch it on replay and of course for timestamps we like to sort them uh, by design as well so if you want inspiration for a die it's easier to find in the video so the makers of course if you're if you're new to the live the makers are all listed on timmoltz.com on the maker page and you, Mario put the link. Thanks Mario. And you can also, uh, following the live, I'll do a blog post and Zoe goes in and links to the makers. So thanks Zoe. She'll link if the makers do stuff on social media. And I just want to address a couple things. The purpose of the makers is to inspire, not to teach. Some of them share techniques and tutorials. Many just show you their make. So, uh, some people have just this, unrealistic expectation that everything that is shared should have a tutorial and that's just not the case. This is all about inspiration. So treat it for what that is. It is about uh, inspiring and I think that they do an amazing job uh, with the inspiration. But all of the makes will be on timholtz.com following the live so you can go through, see the thumbnails, see who made what, follow them on social media um, and all their links of course are on the makers page. And I'll really, I, I just want to share just some incredible incredible inspiration with you and I'll show you the details. So this first one, again, this is all done um, with the artsy leaves and I love seeing kind of the difference of how things are made. Both of these cards are uh, done by Sharon and I love the style, the whole color. And when you see stuff again, you look at those and you're like, mm, what do I do with them? You know, uh, they, they look a little vintage. I try to keep my packaging, believe it or not, really basic. Uh, I just use some color cardstock and ink. I've always done that in my time with Sizzix because I think that 
the personality of something should be up to the maker, okay? So you can see for Sharon, I love how she used this black uh, text over the color leaves, over the cracked background. And I love all that brown, Sharon. That's fabulous. But here's that cracked folder so you can see it does kind of have a wood panel vibe, right? But take a look at, look at those leaves. The fun thing about this die is that the leaves and the stems are separate. So you can line them up this way or you can mix and match. So for example, the tall stems could be used on any of the tall leaves, the shorter ones on the short leaves and so on. So having the ability to mix and match will always give it totally different personality. I love seeing that little bit of, you see that shimmer, that's mica stain on those leaves. But then you have those leaves that you would think, okay, well that's probably just for fall. No way. Just that hello card. I love that. It's using a stamp from Stampers Anonymous and I love seeing all of these colorful leaves and again, mica stain. So if you have all those backgrounds that you've done and you don't know what to do with them, make some leaves, cut them all up, mix and match your colors and just have a ball. It's a very cool way and you could just make a whole bowl of leaves and if you have a whole bowl of leaves, then you've got them to just plop on a card. You can do a line, you can do a cluster, you get the idea. Absolutely beautiful. Inspiring as always, right? Always inspiring. So next up, Kath created this and I love the fall card. I love the shakety shake. So uh, beautiful shaker card that Kath did. This is that distressed wood grain cardstock from last year, that black. I do love that. I'm, thank you for using some of your stash on this, Kath. Uh, a little ideology quote, but I love seeing, see that little inky background? Love the detail of that little stencil and then taking those leaves and using black for the stems. And that's that same wood grain to tie it all together. And then of course we have a shakety shake. So really beautiful. I do love shaker cards. Do, I always do. do. I do. It's so much fun, um, but beautiful. And again, fall palette, fall vibes. I'm going to, I'm piling all the makes here and then I'll put them all in the screen at the end because I get very, I confuse myself otherwise. Uh, Kubert created these again, very similar to the idea of, of using color leaves, but in a totally different way than Sharon. And I love uh, the ideas that makers provide. So here's the idea that I really uh, was drawn to when I was sorting this one. I love the whole half wreath thing. I don't know if that was the purpose, but I kind of, I see this as a wreath even though these leaves are large, and I would imagine if you tried to make a full wreath on an A2, it would look massive. So just the idea of creating these leaves and then using just the stems as filler, right? So remember when I, or veins, if you want to call them, but you, you know what I mean? That you can still make the leaves, but then all of those little veins or stems, I don't want to say veins, you can use in between and then just that inky background. But, but to me, I see this as a wreath. And I'm like, how great to make a wreath out of that on a card and not, not worrying about finishing. So I just, I love that. So, and again, a card for a friend. And then taking that and, and totally going rogue with your background, putting it on black. Again, this is Distress uh, Black Heavy Stock. It's just that wonderful, uh, it's, a, it's a great flat black matte cardstock. I had to get that out. Um, it's so cool how it makes everything pop. Stamping a little text, a little splattering. You've got your leaves and then we have, this, I think this is bulletin, uh, that, that alphanumeric from Sizzix with a hello card. So there again, leaves, not just for fall, very cool. And totally different dynamic styles with, so again, you cut out leaves and you're like, I'm gonna make some cards. They don't have to be the same, just so cool. Love the effect. Then we have Zoe with a Y, Zoe in Italy. Um, I love the mixed media approach. Zoe loves to do mixed media and I love seeing what she does with with dies. So here you can see these dies used on just kind of grungy backgrounds. And again, totally different ways, uh, using the leaves and then kind of cutting out. And you can see that reptile done in purple in the background with some sprays, a little oxide. So it kind of mutes it down that little shine. That's a little bit of, of crackle. See that clear crackle. So you get that shine and the little cracks in there for that card. And then you have the reptile used on metallic again, beautiful inky background. And I love the leaves that are also cut and layered in vellum. There's some cut out of the reptile. And I think that pop of metallic, perfect, <laughs> the shine. Uh, I just think it's, it's a beautiful way to use it. And again, seeing these dies used, totally different. Totally different styles, cards by cards by cards. It's like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and Purple Lovers, like just that splash of that and embracing the space, that's just, that's pretty magical, all right? 
Okay. Then we have, we've got, I'm going to kind of bring in this whole thing. Uh, Louisa just like nailed it. She, I mean, she created a lot of makes. A lot of the makers created a lot of makes, but I'm, I'm a fan of multiples. But this one was just kind of a, a random make that she's like, should I send? Yes, send, because I, I think it's just a great, I'll get into the cards using the leaves, but I, I just think it's a great representation of what you can do with a folder. Um, and Louisa does a great job on YouTube sharing how she does a lot of the process. She's definitely a process sharer. But here's just taking that tapestry folder and applying different mediums to it. She had the whole little breakdown, but I'm sure she'll share that, so I don't need to share that during live. But you can see everything from collage medium to crackles to uh, different surface treatments. But again, using that embossing folder and cutting it out. So whether you were doing a card, whether you're doing a collage background, that's just very cool. It's cool to just take a design and repetition in different mediums and transform it into whatever. So this definitely gave it uh, more of a, of a gothic vibe. But I think some of these finishes and treatment, it's also kind of a, a great swatch representation to be like, oh, okay, I use this, I embossed with this. Cool, right? Love it. All right, but these are her cards that she did. Uh, and I love, I love the grunge vibe, you know that. I love the, the vintage palette use, I still love the color. But again, repetition. So taking that background, so here we've got tapestry and then you ink over the top just to kind of hit the raised areas. But using the pieces, and what's interesting about these cards is that these cards didn't actually use the solid parts. It's all just using these little details. And that to me was the benefit of this die. When Lisa and I were designing it, it's like, let's just do that. I've done so many leaves. Let's just do them completely separate. So that little stem part, that's all on its own. The leaf doesn't really have that, that stem. It's just a, a round, a rounded bottom. So seeing these pieces used, you can see uh, taking an idea and mixing and matching, you know, cutting up a bunch of these, but putting these as a background and then using a different one as a focal point. But when you're cutting this, that becomes the background, that's the focal point. And when you're cutting this, that's the background, that's the focal point. And sitting down with all of your stuff, doing backgrounds one day, doing collage one day, doing tiles one day, the sewing details just is fabulous. And I love the finish. I love the splatters. I love the, the little threads, a little bit of, you can use thread, you can pull apart mummy cloth if you want. And then of course, ideology stickers. We have believe in yourself make a difference and have an open heart. But great ideas for a diet, and that's what the live is about. It is about inspiring you in a way of looking at something completely different than what it was, okay? Because you'll see that and you're like, oh, it's fall, I don't do it. Halloween, mm, I don't do it. Color, don't like it. Wow, okay, that design is very cool. And using those pieces to create your own texture and pattern, that's inspiration. That is inspiration. Speaking of inspiration, Anita did this. You can always count on Anita to just be way out of the box in seeing a die for a whole different use. So here she created a scene, kind of a, a mountainscape, if you will, and then used the ideology clipping stickers. Uh, the sky is clear and blue over the mountains, the golden leaves, vivid and flamboyant, a happy place to be. So a beautiful fall make using uh, an et cetera tag as a base. I love the detail of the nails and the string going around, but using alcohol inks, on your background, kind of torn paper to create this, this scene. That's why we have that really nice shine. But now the leaves are trees. Now they become fall trees. So taking this and creating those layers. And whether you wanted to create all of this or you just wanted to use a couple of them and put it on a card. So maybe you're gonna take this idea and that's the thing I always uh, want to remind you as you guys are watching these. Um, jot down those ideas. If you think you're gonna remember them next week of what you saw in live, it's it's just not going to happen. So jotting them down. I agree. I agree, Joy. She is very creative. Uh, Anita is very creative in this. So taking the idea and go leaves as trees use on, maybe you want to use it on a, a wood grain background. So you have it more of like a, a lumber vibe or do it on a, an ink splatter. That to me is what it's, what it's all about from the inspiration. But yeah, the alcohol ink really makes those, those pieces shine. Cool idea, right? Very cool. Then we have this card series that Kathy did, and I love that. So she was saying that she uh, likes to exchange cards with a friend and they, they send cards every season. So she wanted to create um, all four seasons of cards using this die set. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. Again, if you're making and you have an idea, 
it doesn't matter that we're in, well, we're getting into fall Halloween. If you have that spring idea and the stuff is out, make it. Then you already have a spring card or at least jot it down so you remember uh, what it is. But I love seeing how the color palette changed from spring, summer, fall, and winter. And when you see that, it's, it's so impressive, isn't it? When you just, and I'll hold these up, but I love seeing that that's that multi-level dotted. So that's the folder that we did in our everyday collection. I think it's a great, great background for this one because it does give it a bit more of a modern vibe. But just by changing up the palette, you can see how beautiful that is on just a white background with that. I love that folder. The reason I love this folder, I'll just talk about it. I know it's not part of this release, but it was part of the 2023 release, is the, is the blank space. Sometimes an embossing folder that has all over pattern becomes super busy. And I love that this background has that resting place. So I think that's beautiful. But take a look at those leaves. That wonderful palette, little twine, a little ideology charm. And that just says spring note. And then summer, those colors. And it could be mica stains. It could be inks, oxide, whatever you like to, whatever you like to do. But isn't that crazy that just changing your palette changing, changes the entire aesthetic of of a card because i would never think you could pull off spring but that totally pulls off spring absolutely does and even winter i love just the icy blues in there with the winter note and i think it's just charming all the little details she did but that just shows that you can take a single die and you can utilize it go again and again and again ember just said it could double as a fish these would make adorable fish yeah i could see i could see people doing fish and and pete probably going crazy on that too love it see inspiration inspiration overload am i right okay this one i actually had to read the note that came with this one because i'm like what the what so tammy b created this one and she did when i say a note she sent me like full-on note about it because i'm like I, I really had to pay attention to see how it was done this is all done i'm going to read it again this is all done with the artsy stem so here's the thing she used eclectic elements fabric, so there's fabric, but she says she ironed fabric onto craft stock with Wonder Under, it's a fusible webbing. So all the leaves and the flowers are glue gunned into place, just spray painting a, a, a wreath black. So this could be made large or small, depending on what you want. And then this is Emporium that she die cut uh, for fabric. But let's just take a look and, and truly kind of understand all the work that went into this. So by putting these on paper, it does give that, that fabric vibe so you have the jaggedy edge but you also because it's on craft stock it allows you to really shape and kind of create dimension and texture these flowers same thing just die cutting these so she created the flowers and tammy's great about tutorials i'm sure she's going to share a lot of these makers will share tutorials throughout the season so maybe not this week or next week but it's going to keep going because halloween is not until october so they have plenty of time to do it but how Fantastic is this. This is so Haunted Mansion. And to see, just to see these shapes. So here you have Louisa that's just using uh, the stems and then you have Tammy that just uses the leaves. See, it all, it all clicks together. And I'm sure uh, Lisa's watching as well going, you know what, it totally makes sense. Because at the time when it's brainstorming, it's just an idea. It's just one of those, wouldn't it be cool if these were separate than this? But then when we see that makers actually appreciate that feature and and embrace it it's just so cool so so cool but yeah what a freaking phenomenal i do i love this it's like that sash it's so so cool so just so far we're like one die in we're on artsy stems and already you've seen just i'm gonna slide this off to actually i'll put this i'll put this right there i'm just I'm trying to make a little landing space for all of these things just to show you how many ideas uh you can get from a single a single die set that you're like oh it's just a bunch of fall leaves yeah okay sure but you could do a lot of stuff with just fall leaves that's apparent that's just absolute magic look at that beautiful beautiful i can't even fit them all on screen so cool so much inspiration with artsy leaves right Come on, amazing that is beautiful it is so we will pack these up. I'll take those. Yeah, I'll put them right in here. Put them. Okay, there we go. Awesome. All right. So 
Next up, we're going to get into some backgrounds. We're going to talk about uh, dots and dots will kind of get into frights. But first, we'll just talk about uh, the dots because the dots kind of led with the there's just there's so much inspiration, so much inspiration. All right. So these cards Paula created and I love I know Paula's not a fan of making cards, but I love when Paula makes cards because she just makes them in a Paula style. I think every maker, you know, we gravitate towards the kind of things we like to make, but I think that your style carries through uh, whatever you make. So I love these backgrounds. Look at these sprayed, beautiful backgrounds. But here's the part that I just thought when I, you can see what I'm seeing. When I put them away, I was like, whoa, it looks like these, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of what that sparklets water truck. When you see those little oh, things yeah. kind of twinkle, yeah. Fun. Yeah, it was like these dots were lighting up because she did metallic craft stock as that base layer. How brilliant is that? So you think of it like Christmas lights. So then all of a sudden I was like, oh, this is going to be great at Christmas. You do a festive background, maybe you do a tree and it looks like twinkling lights. I loved that idea. Um, and it was it was so cool. So here taking uh, the layer dots, this one, of course, just adding the RT leaves on there. Now you create a fall card, fall vibe. This one, you're going to see when we get into Big Frights that the Big Frights, in addition to Boo and Eek, it has those cool kind of paper cut icons. And I love how she uh, used just that skull and crossbones. And then she even has like the little 1331 from clippings. But how great are those? So when you look at that die and you're like, wah, 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 like what, what would I do with this? Well, buckle up, Buttercup, because it is very, very cool to see uh, what it does. And that's, that's what I tell myself. Like I'm... When I do these lives, I am so open to ideas instead of like, nope, that's how I really saw it used. I see it and I'm like, man, buckle up because you're just going to be so impressed with, with the inspiration. Beautiful. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kelly said, I love the gold dot in his eyeball. Me too. Right there. So good. Uh, so maybe it's a glitter card stock. Maybe it's, I don't know, whatever. There's a lot of things that, that you could add to it. All right. We also are lucky enough to have some makes by the amazing Pete Hughes in the UK. Uh, for those in the UK, if you follow uh, Sizzix, you know the resident uh, genius Pete Hughes. Uh, he made some stuff for live. So thanks Pete for getting us uh, some samples. He's very busy doing all the stuff that he has to do. Uh, and so sending us makes is, is such, a, such a treat. So Pete's style, always so unique of how he incorporates dyes. Here, he took those layer dots. I love the juxtaposition of that. Offset, very cool. There is, uh, I think this was Bold Frights from last year. This is that retired die set, so keep that in mind. Um, but the stamping, the inking, just that layer on a, a white card, and again, just that slight offset angle with the skull, brilliant. And then we have these, because you know if you have this die, when you cut it out, you are gonna, you are gonna enjoy the confetti that you have, because you do have wonderful little dots in all sizes. But I love how he took the dots and just use those to create two other cards. So here, position those, and you have some options. You can just sit there and you can line them up, which is, I think, the best way to do it. Just get in there and play and create a pattern. Or you could lay this down as a template and kind of pop them in if you needed to. Either way is going to work. But I love how uh, Pete incorporated that little ideology uh, label sticker there, just on that white. And then this one where he took those dots, cut through again, just using, that's why I love the, I do love that die. And then there's that cutout moon from the Big Frights, but also the cloud from Edison. You'll see that cloud just pop up because it's a cool cloud. So yeah, I'm happy that I did it. I really am. I'm happy we added that uh, to Edison because it, it is a, a great die that works with all the designs in the collection, but really cool for layer dots. Amazing, amazing, gosh. The styles, always amazing, always inspiring, always impressive. So Sharon created these cards. Look at that. I love that. Again, switching up your color palettes, just changing your colors of cardstock. So whether you want to do ink uh, like Pete did, mica stains, you want to do metallic like Paula did, or you just wanted to change up your color cardstock. I love how Sharon incorporated the positive of those dies. So the same kind of cutout dies. So we're talking about this one from uh, last Halloween you also get the alphabet, right? You get all these letters that come out. So using the positive and the negative of a die, it's a twofer right there. But here you can see uh, Sharon just used those different colors of cardstock, a little eek, a little spider in the web. That is from Big Frights. And then I'm here for the candy. You know it. That is, I am. That, so that's from Trick or Treat last year. 
Uh, I can't believe that. I can't believe these dies are already retired, but that's all right. They're still available in some places, but that is so good. That big candy corn and those colors that Sharonda used. Oh, so fun. That's mica stain. So you see that shine? That's why I wanted to tip the card. Using mica stain as your colorant just adds such beautiful charm and shimmer. And then feeling wicked. And the fun thing about this skull, you'll see him use different ways throughout the makes. He is designed to be a skull and crossbones. So you can use the little crossbones or just the skull or just the bones. But that's where you just sit with yourself and you're like, I'm not into the whole inking and this and that. Okay, great. Just get out your color cardstock and do it. Or I'm not into color cardstock. I want to ink so many different things for, you know it, Mario, I am here for the candy. I, I do love it. But, but great inspiration for the dots, right? Then we've got a couple more and then we're kind of getting into uh, the big frights, but I do love these cards. So Jen created this one. I think it's really great to have kind of, I know when a lot of people, when they saw those dots, they kind of thought like little googly eyes. So she added the googly eyes. Little glitter, little sparkly cardstock back there. Boo, happy Halloween, and then just some glittery, sparkly cardstock. But I love the colors of this, the purples and greens, and it's just, it's fun. It's fun and silly to kind of create with that. And then Kath created this one. I love, I mean, there's so many cool design elements of this one that I found. Oh, I just noticed that. I was looking at the spiders and the dots, but I, she totally split that background because I was like, where did the web come from? Oh, and it's a shakety shake. Oh, Kath. Kath, you have my heart with the shakes this time. Look at that. Look at those little, look at those little stars. I love that sequence. I need to find out where to get those little stars. Look at them. They're so tiny. So I love how she split the background to create this bigger card and then left this, this opening little spider web transparency to make a shake down the middle. And then we've got all these dropping spiders with a little sparkle. And then you can see this looks like deco sheet. This was ideology deco sheet that we did in the orange and the black. And then that splattered black cardstock. How freaking cool is that? How cool is that that both makers, one use boo and one use ink eek. We've got Jen and Kath. I'm telling you, 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 I couldn't plan this if I wanted to. It's so good. So just a little, again, a little recap on what you can do with layered dots. Wow. 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 Eek. Eek. <laughs> yeah. So good. Right. But a cool way. Again, think of the ideas, metallic cardstock, using the dots, offset, color cardstock, mixing and matching the dyes, uh, using it with googly eyes and splitting it to do a shaker. See, I couldn't plan this if I wanted to. The fact that you would think, okay, we're going to get essentially all the same samples because it's just a dotted background. What can you do with a dotted background? The power of the makers, man. I'm telling you, just amazing. Inspiration everywhere. And I absolutely love it. So, so good. So with that, we're going to get into Big Frights. Thanks, Mario. You're and the cool thing about Big Frights is that they are big. That's the, that's the matter of fact of them. And because they are big, they're easy to work with, to be honest. They are because they, they kind of become the card. You don't have to overthink these, but you can use them many different ways. So this is a set that Stacy created. And I love this trio because Stacy loves her inks and I love that she loves her inks. So creating ink backgrounds, maybe you're using mica stain, maybe you're doing whatever it is, you can create these backgrounds and hopefully this shows you. So this is a, this is an A2 card, you know, oh, I think that one got a little bent. There, let me fix that because uh, that's that little flag, but it's designed to fill the space. So you can use them a lot of different ways. But again, I love the repetition of this. So here's, take a look at the detail that maybe you didn't notice. I love how she went and stitched through those, stitched the letters, that black, that's actually, hold on a second. I have to look. Wow, that is cool. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but she like did foam layers between everything. Cause I was like, this is so dimensional, but it's just that thin uh, foam tape. So that's raised from the card base. And then that's raised from this base. And I love how she stitched through uh, that top layer. And she did that on all of the cards, that little black stitching. And I love the, the black on black and then use that stitching around the edge as well. Eek, so cool. So here she used, uh, this is a Stampers Anonymous stamp. This was oh, Tiny Frights or something like that. There's a whole set of all these tiny little uh, frightening things. 
But this is where you can really see the importance of not only creating these uh, frights, but what I wanted to do is add some elements that if this was gonna be your die set and you wanted to make with it, you also had some details to embellish. And those, those embellishments could be used however you want. You can use them by themselves, like you saw how you know, Paula and Pete, they just used the skull or the moon or the bats or the spider. You don't always have to pair it with the word, but you can because it was scaled to where you really can just decorate the word. We wanted to make sure when Lisa and I were doing this that they were to scale that you could put it right over the word like Stacy did and it's not going to overpower the word, but it's, it's enough of a scale and the same aesthetic that it's got that cool hand cut vibe, that look. I love the stitch bones. Oh my gosh, that's, that's some good sewing right there. And then the spider, and I love how she did a little string. <laughs> so, so there you go. Yeah, eek is Mario's come on for Halloween. Come on. So there is a die here of that little straight piece, but you could go in and use a little string or some mummy cloth, but fabulous cards, right? So good. So, so good. All right. Then as we keep going, Joy created this. This is a, this is a shiggity shake. But this has like, it's glitter in there. Yeah, it, it just, it, it makes me think of candy. I'm not going to lie. It makes me think of pixie sticks. Remember those as a kid? Like, I don't know, the little paper straw and then you rip it off and then you put it in your mouth and you tip your head back and all that powder goes in and makes you cough. Yeah, that's what I love. That reminds me of just yummy, yummy pixie sticks. So good. But here, a little shakety shake under boo. There's some mica stain. And I love just that, the simplicity of the black metallic because the ideology craft stock there is black so that's such a beautiful background with that multi-level folder and then trick-or-treat so 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 good Tr yeah that's it's, distressed it's, glitter in there that's beautiful a little tinted distressed glitter see that's why rock candy it makes me think of candy that's why it looks so yummy shaking, and, shaking candy. and beautiful yeah <laughs> just so good all right so these cards kath created more cards, transparency too. I think that this is really great. Uh, I love these little square cards that she did using a little bit of, of tape, using the ideology uh, deco. It's a shame that this, this didn't last more than a season, but it did come back at least twice. But I love uh, just how delicate this is. It's very different than glitter cardstock, um, but it's very cool that she incorporated this on transparency. So you can see that little spider web uh, transparency right there. And then the shadow is on the inside. Looks like a little foundry wax. See that metallic in there? Look at that foundry wax splattered in there. Again, on the transparency. So you could still write the message or you could type something else in, or they could just stand up and you can do your message on the back because I think that they really make a, a great uh, party, party placement right there. Look at that. And there's the stickers. I love those ideology stickers. This could either be the tape or the individual stickers. Those didn't come back this year either. So much stuff, but that's the thing about seasonal. We have stuff, it's there. So if you have it, now you get to use it. Um, but I love the black glitter as well. That's distressed glitter. I can tell that. Look how, it, because it's like, it's black diamonds in there. Look at those bats and the spiders. So those little things, those little elements in there, just embellish to your heart's content on a card. Eek, boo, cute. Okay, so next, these cards, Vicky created these, um, and you'll always know because makers just have different styles. That's what it is. They just kind of do them. And, and Vicky loves to get her grunge on, her industrial grunge. And take a look at these because they use hardware heads. How cool is that? So we've got, uh, besides reptile in the back, so she used reptile. And then that is a Stampers Anonymous stencil of like those little brush strokes, how she just kind of created uh, these little marks in there just to create, I don't know, it, it totally makes it look like a dragon or something with all those little, those spots. But you've got that cool shine of those color backgrounds. But then Eek is done in that metallic, just using mica stains, using some paint, some oxide, just really creating grungy where it looks like metal, but it's paper. Then using the skulls, but it's really, to me, it's the hardware heads, guys. These are ideology hardware heads. These are just kind of like screw heads that you can glue on but I love how she mimicked the color of the background in there and just gave these cards the most incredible industrial vibe. So if you've been looking at the make so far and you're like, oh, it's so cutesy, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of a vintage, well, here you go. I'm more industrial, here you go. And even if you're not into this die, this idea alone of like, hey, I need to take like a word die and 
make up some metallic color cardstock, not necessarily metallic, but using uh, micas and, and all that to create a grungy background. And then it's really the elements that tie it all together. It's those accessories that, and his screw eye eyes, so good. So good, very, very cool. I was, uh, again, amazing. Just amazing, the, the inspiration. So Natifa did this, and Tifa, I love that because it's an envelope and there's something inside because I can feel, well, there's something inside. I'm sure this thing comes out, but take a look at the detail. Now, Natifa always does really great stuff with uh, her envelopes, so much color and sprays. I love, I love the little face back there with uh, the bones, the spider, the moons, just to make that little pattern. And I love all the metallic around the edge, but here she created a window, but look at that transparency done in reptile. It's like cracked glass. So to me, it just, I mean, I don't even see it as reptile other than I said it, but it just now mimics like old bubbled glass. Very cool. So that's a great envelope. And inside, we've got to make, I haven't seen this, but oh yeah, okay. Take a look at this. So there's Blossom. How cool is that to see that die? Blossom, that big flower we did uh, earlier this year for Halloween. I love it. And then we've got that skull. He's embossed with a little bit of, See that multi-level tapestry in there? So that texture is his face. Is this open? Yes. I was like, either I'm, oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Look at how fun that is. Now, I, so this whole card, this is an ideology backdrop. So that's that periodic chart. So this is a sheet of ideology backdrops. What a great way to do a gatefold card out of that size paper for ideology. Wow, wow. Then we've got all that glitter, all that sparkle on the bats. See? It's like Liza Minnelli. I just, I love this, that black sparkle. It's just, I don't know. See? Sometimes I just shouldn't say what's in my brain out loud, but that's just what I want to like break out in song. But take that. Um, look at that. Happy Halloween. And again, the metallic cardstock with, I just like the that orange metallic with that tapestry in there. And then, boo. But what a, what a fabulous make so so oh eek there it's in look at that i didn't even see the reveal so she used both on the same make we've got boo on the card and then eek inside the envelope see the the joys of constructing your own envelope you can do all of those cool things. isn't that just i mean come on that is just wow 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 i, I love that yeah that periodic chart it's just so good so so good oh see that. but <laughs> but yeah, i can't i can't help it's in my brain but this is i think this is what threw me off on the paper because the paper is like much thicker but that's because she did two backdrops back to back see that's really smart so that's different than uh, the front at least at least i think she did it feels awfully thick yeah this i don't know well you have to watch it because she's going to share it i'm sure all right Amazing, amazing. All right, we got a few more. Okay, so Pete created this, and I, again, I always love Pete's style and just his ideas, his brain. So um, taking like, you can get these menu stands or like, these are just plastic that you can paint and grunge up, but what a great way to display. People ask all the time, like, what do you do with cards and tags? Well, some people hang the cards, some people make garlands out of cards, some people just have cards, but this I think is a, a great idea because you can often find these at, uh, Ikea, the dollar store, and just how great he did grunging these up to make them look like really creepy Halloween. But then the background, so there, uh, and I know Pete did a YouTube on this where he, uh, this started as black cardstock and he did layers of paint. Fascinating to watch uh, his process. But this is the cracked folder. And then of course we've got Big Frights in Boo, and then you can see the skull and crossbones, the moon and the spider, but great display. And then we have Eek, and that's on the reptile. Look at that reptile back there. I see, I love this, this worn area that, that Ryan created. So good. There's that moon, because remember we have two sizes. So there's the small one, so good. Clouds, told you, you're gonna see clouds just pop up. Those are the clouds from Edison. Those, of course, the bats from uh, Big Frights. And again, that grungy, grungy stand. So good, I'll put those down, but you get the idea. And then this, I love this brilliant little make. So this is just using, um, a vignette frame, but you can take any frame that you have from dollar store, anything like that. And then this background, of course, is tapestry. Look at those colors. Look at that cool grunge. But you see this guy? That is the skull. And this, 
is from the die that we did tailored, the one we did this year. So this came out in January, but taking those elements and dressing him up. How perfect is that? So creating, uh, so if you, if you have this die and you're using it for steampunk and all sorts of things, like there we have it. Just so, so good. Uh, I love that grunge. I agree, Tammy. It is killer, right? So good. The pairing is perfection. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing just to see uh, all the, the ideas. And, uh, again, inspired by a die set or inspired by an element of a die set and then just using uh, the pieces. But yeah, I love that skull in there because there's a, a lot of, I'm sure we'll see a lot of people uh, mix and match and kind of dress things up. But so cool. So much fun to create. And then we've got two more. So I told you last week that I would be inspired to use some stuff that I did last week. So I took the reptile background that we made uh, in the demo last week and then just created a couple of cards. So this is the mica stain background we did as well, just using specimen and fallen acorn and just created that little card. Another thing that is uh, important to note if, if you're going to create uh, on busy backgrounds is offsetting your dies. So here for the skull, I cut him twice. I used, this is just kind of a, an embossing glaze scrap that I was able, cause I thought it kind of looked like bone with that little shine. But I also die cut it out of black and just offset it a little bit to create that drop shadow. I felt that he popped a little bit better on the background. Then we have the bats. And then of course the little spider for Eek, some hardware heads in the corner. And then this was the moon that I created out of grit paste glow. So this will glow. It glows perfect. That is the tapestry background that I shared uh, last week. The boo, look at that, with all that beautiful shimmery mica. Again, created that one uh, last weekend. And then all the bats. So I just chose to have bats flying everywhere. And I'm so glad that uh, Simon Says Stamp has the tiniest little foam squares. So you can cut them up. So you can see all those little foam squares. Those are even cut up smaller to make all those bats just pop and fly off. And I do, again, I love uh, Distressed Black Heavy Stock because it's thick enough, so it's not gonna get all wrinkly, but it's just so dark and contrast, just a, a lot of fun. So, so many things that, that you can create with, with these dies, right? So many different ideas. Eek. Eek. Yeah, I know, just amazing. I've got a, nice, look at that. I gotta do a little sparkly there. There's that little envelope. I mean, yeah, it's often so much stuff that I can't even fit in, but I, I love the idea of just being able to share uh, the amount of inspiration and the amount of style as well from, you know, uh, using glitters, using metallics, using mica stains, using paint. There's so many things that you can do uh, and create doing little shakers on the inside, you know, whether you're doing glitter or sequence or whether you're just creating uh, ink backgrounds. You think of a die like this and you're like, what would I create with it? Well, you can create magic with it. So really amazing, amazing. The maker's just and you so incredibly cool. And you time to make, that's so awesome. I did, I was so happy yes, I, I made uh, the last two hours last night. That's what, it, that was the amount of time I did and I don't believe in excuses. I think excuses are just a free pass to, to let your creativity go. And I say creativity, well, I don't say it, everyone says it, it's a muscle. You have to kind of use it and, and keep going with it, otherwise, Use it or lose it. All right. So here we're going to get into, we're kind of going into the, the moon. Kubert uh, created this one. So again, we have that big frights, but now we're talking like bigger cards. And what's, what's important to note is that you can take these dies and not just do things with cards. These could, you've seen them in, in frames, boxes, and you'll see a lot of different styles of makes. But Kubert uh, created this beautiful background. I love all of those inks. There's that moon. So you can see moonlight. I love that we can create a glowing moon. We can create an inky moon, a mica moon. Then we've got the bats. You don't have to use all the bats like I use. You can just use parts and pieces of it. And then we have this. I love that that's, a, that's the crack leather folder that we did. So see, it looks like leather. I love seeing that little bit of gate. That is from the colorized graveyard, but a nice scene. So this is a great card uh, that someone could display, or it could go on a clipboard. And that could be uh, a decor piece, but just a great card using the moon, the bats, and those words. Just really cool. Then we've got this piece. And uh, Louisa just created just, it was very cool to see her style used in the world of Sizzix. So she created this altered book. And yeah, Louisa shares all of this stuff on 
on YouTube. I'm not sure if she's sharing her Sizzix makes, probably so, because she shares uh, everything. But this is a giant old book. The book itself is fabulous, by the way. Um, but it creates kind of this, this little standing display, vignette. So you can kind of see how it stands. So these are glued together. But I love the whole deconstruction where it's like another book kind of cut down. So you see, it's like, this is a book and this is a book, opposite directions, but this half of the book is cut off. Does that make sense? So this way she was able to go in and like chew out all those pages, create this eroded look. This crackle that looks like paint is the folder. Look at that treatment. See, the more you work it, you ink it, you scratch it, you splatter it, you collage medium, like that looks like old cracked paint, but it isn't, that's an embossing folder. And then we've got the moon. I love how she took the moon, uh, different sizes and really cut them. So like different, like the moons are rising and they're just, it's fabulous, the color in the back and again, the depth. So you can see how many layers of cardstock between the top and the back and the back could be your inky swirly oxide backgrounds. It could be alcohol ink, whatever you want to work with. And there again, those are those stems from uh, the artsy leaves. You have a little bit of, of resist back there. You can do embossing glaze or you can use uh, clear texture paste. And then we have those flying bats out and then of course crackle. But see, you can totally get your creep on and your grunge on with dyes. That's amazing because you can look at a dye and go, oh, it's, you know, it's so cartoony. Like, well, I mean, yes, it is. I, I would agree with that. You can. You can say it's, oops, we'll use this one, uh, cartoony, but then when you see it, it could be as artistic or mixed media as you want to create. So it's really, it's really beautiful. Does it, is the book open? Are there lights on? Uh, no, and no. So that book opens, but the book opens here. Are there lights? No. Someone just said, does a book open? Do I see lights? No, what you, I think what you're seeing is really just how, how luminous those inside of the moon uh, are. But yeah, it does stand up like that. Isn't that great? Amazing. So good. <laughs> so good to see like a moon. I'm going to make with a moon. Here's what I'm going to create. Okay. And, and I think it can also tell a story, right? So Zoe created this, Zoe Hillman, and I love the story of the moon. To me, like it just kind of brought everything in. So this is using uh, and et cetera tag, take a look at all the detail. Take a look at all the freaking dyes used. So here we start with this background tag. Again, that's an et cetera tag. So a nice, great foundation. And then we have that cool moon, that like harvest moon, Halloween moon rising in the background. Then we have the clouds, the clouds from Edison, very important. Then these are the gates. So uh, I'm not sure if this die is still retired. This was done a couple years ago, so it may be retired by now, but um, it's very cool. I love the trick-or-treaters. Oh my gosh, look at these. These, I'm, I think these are rubs. If I, if I recall one year in ideology, I did these little faces as remnant rubs. I'm not sure. So you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but they look, they remind me of rubs because those little faces from pumpkin head uh, stamp set that I did. But look at how dimensional those trick-or-treaters are built and they're kind of creeping in front of the graveyard with the gates open and the moon and the clouds and the bats flying up. Just so freaking they cool rubs. they are there we go i see that <laughs> thanks zoe uh then we have the the etc trim as that little ledge you got some moss and then take a look at boo we've got that boo and of course done through the cracked oh that little skull okay that little skull is from colorized graveyard but where is that little hat from i don't know you stumped me i don't know where that little hat is from but look at him little hat on the skull. I know where that came from. That came from the, the new colorized graveyard. See, I love to be stumped. Where'd that little hat come from? She'll know. I'll she did it. <laughs> and then, of course, the background. This is black texture paste. So the take Christmas a look. Vault. Christmas vault. Oh, see, is that from the like the caroler guy? I bet that is. That's the music caroler guy. Wow. What a reach. That's that's very cool to scale. Um, Black texture paste through a stencil because then you have that black map, but really just like yes, an entire she scene. Said See? Yes, the caroler. Got it. So cool. No, it's not a sticker. No, no this isn't a sticker. This right. is a die cut from uh, the Christmas Vault die set last year. It's a caroler. So it's like a silhouette of, of a, a Christmas caroler, but he's wearing a top hat and she created that. Very cool. But see, 
taking those dies and you have them. And yeah, sometimes you're gonna make cards where it's just this, or you're gonna make cards with that or make cards with that. But when you tie it all together, it does tell a story. And that could all start from a single shape that just sends you down a creative world. And I just, I love that. I couldn't love it more. But see, this is where you can kind of reach into the, into the vault and take out those older dies or take out those older remnant rubs. Just, it's so good. It's so good. All right, and I think definitely, and I know just from the makers, like I did talk about how, you know, the moon, the trick-or-treaters, like it was, it all goes together. So you're gonna see a lot of inspiration where these pieces um, are tied in because I think it is important. And, and when you create cards, oh, I love that. I love that little, little bit of deco. Um, so creating cards, sometimes people I think try to, try to put themselves in a specific box where they're like, this is what I make. And that's fine. If that's your happy place, you need to do you. You need to make what makes you happy. But you can also take any of those skills and create at any level. I don't think a card has to be an A2 or a slimline or anything particular. I think you can just start out with your scene and then cut accordingly. Certainly my cards, that's how I approach it. I just start with the background and then end up folding a piece of paper to fit it. Um, but I love this card that Barbara did using uh, the background. I love that glittery moon, little rock candy. Look how sparkly that is. And I really love these. So these have been embossed so you can see just how thick and shiny um, using, I'm guessing this is, this is embossing enamel for sure. Uh, I love the layers. And there you can see again, that little offset just to give them some depth, the little sparkly pumpkins and the pumpkins, because it's that second die, you can layer them or not. And then just using some, some letters that eat. But I think for me, this is all about the texture besides the colors and the background and the spider webs. I love how Barbara used like, the enamel to create that shine, uh, the sparkle here. Then we've got this looks look like mica on here. So here, this is like crushed mica flakes on the bats. And then we've got deco sheet and glitter. Just so good. It's, it's such a great, such a great departure from how all of these pieces uh, kind of come together, right? So Juliana created this. Look at this little series of tags. If you're looking for Halloween ideas, it is important to know you can make it all different shapes and sizes. And this is why I wanted to do the moon in two scales. Uh, and again, a shout out to Lisa for making it work um, because it took up a lot of real estate on our template when we wanted to do two big giant circles. Um, but I'm like, we just need them because sometimes we want, you know, the moon to be massive. So it's just like huge. And then sometimes we want them like in the distance. So I think we needed those two, two sizes. And this definitely proves it. Same thing with the trick or treaters. I'll go back to this. We want the trio smaller because again, forced perspective. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Disney. Forced perspective because you've got those smaller characters and then that big moon, or we've got the bigger characters and the small moon. So it does create a whole different illusion or depth depending on your making style. So that's also why it was important. But take a look at these tags that Juliana did. Absolutely beautiful. We start with that wonderful background of Cracked. Look at all that color all those purples and blues, yum. And then we've got that moon. And then we've got, uh, these are done out of ideology craft stock. So this is just black. So when you sand it, it reveals the craft core. So that's what gives it this really, almost like a wood finish. That's what I love about craft stock is that when you sand it, you reveal some of that craft and it creates that, that wood effect. I love these little tags too. Look at the little, little boo tags and this ribbon, right? Just using seam binding ribbon and that's, Look at that. looks like a little mica stain on there. Probably mixed with some distress, a little iron gate. I don't know what color, but it's, it's beautiful. But look at that. Wonderful. These can go on treat bags. This can go on just a, a gift, or this could be a card front. Very easy. You could take a tag. You can slap it on. If you just want to make cards, you can stick that on and off you go. But so, so beautiful. Look at that background. I love it. I love the details of this and the sewing. Wonderful job, Juliana. Look at those. Little, little jump ring on there. I mean, that's a detail right there. All the makers, they just, like, I see the amount of stuff that, that was done. So cool. So here we've got this next set of cards that Pete created. Look at that. And here, again, this is now mixing stamps with dies, right? So maybe you don't have the die of uh, those bold frights, and you're like, oh, but I have the stamp. Well, then use it because it's essentially inspired by the same thing. So here, uh, Pete went in and took his inks, did some stamping, whether you're gonna use inks or mica, whatever, and then just created some really cool, painty, grungy backgrounds. 
and die cut these characters. So just this again is a stamp done with ink and stamps on top of it. And then we've got these great kind of mixed media silhouette looking, but how cool is that? Using your stamps, using your dies, they're just fun. They're fun little trick-or-treaters. I love, and that's the whole Halloween night. I mean, I called it Halloween night because when I saw these silhouettes, it just, it brought back so many nostalgic vibes of Halloween night. You know, what are you wearing? What, 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 how big is the bucket or pillowcase that you're putting candy in? You know, where are you going? What are your, what were your friends wearing? You guys all got together and just became uh, mischievous, but I love that. It does it. It has all the feels that die set, all the feels for sure. Now Keisha created this, this fabulous. You ready for this? Okay. First, cute little googly eyes. So you think everything's good, but this is where it's about scale, putting things together. What in the world? Pure magic, colorful magic. And the back that's done uh, with that multi-level folder. And she's got happy Halloween. That's an alphanumeric from physics, just doing the little metallic. And she's got that little, little jack-o'-lantern in there, but take a look at the inside. All that beautiful ink blending. So you have something that could uh, be on a, sit on a mantle. You can have it just kind of this accordion fold, or you could create a triptych with it because it's just paper. But I love how Keisha went in and just did the most amazing, colorful, inky background in all of those colors, created that rainbow vibe for Halloween that you wouldn't even think to do. But then we've got all of these, all this little background, all of these uh, great little stems again from this set you've seen them used so many different ways taking all of those stems just kind of whether they're little creepy vines coming in but there is that offset die again and this is where you're cutting the die twice so that little highlight where it looks like oh is that a, a paint pen or something nope it's just cardstock so cutting it out of orange then cutting it out of black and just offsetting it when you stick them down but look at how they just pop off the page and this to me is like it's mind blowing. I only saw the front. I didn't even see the inside to see that it was actually repeated over here, but I love seeing the small scale trick or treaters and then the big scale again, that whole perspective. So using them together, I would have never thought of that and I couldn't love it more. It's amazing. And the little googly eyes are so fun, but what a, what a fabulous, fabulous make all in the details. Yeah, that that's just yum right there beautiful i'm black so good beautiful job amazing amazing job Keisha. just so cool i love it all right we're gonna keep going kathy created this i mean there's so much inspiration for the dies guys so just be ready it just it keeps going keep going so kathy created this card a beautiful big card and i love um that she made this because these were sized uh to fit with this, I know if you have Eek, Eek has a bit of a step down for him, so you're gonna to need to give him something to stand on. But especially for Boo, this little trio is sized to fit right across. There's a mica stain. I love all the layers. I love the moon in the background. So all of these colors, this is all done with distress mica stain. So you're getting those beautiful distress colors, but then you just get that unexpected shine of the mica. And I love the layers of the moon. So you can glue it flat, but I really love when it just has a little bit of pop between there the bats and again that's distressed black so when you're seeing all this black cardstock and you're like it looks like black matte painted it really is that cardstock when mario mario picked it up this morning he's like this paper is amazing i'm like isn't it it is it's so thick and just amazing but i agree paula the background is just it's so fabulous all the ink and kind of cloudy wondery goodness beautiful so mixing those you know three different die sets mixing it on a card so good I agree, Vicky. So, so good. See, I love when the makers show up and they just kind of rah, rah, support each other. It's so neat. Marina and Vicky. And it's, I love it. I love it there. Uh, Kath created this uh, and et cetera tag. And I love the whole feel of this because they're like, I don't know, kind of creeping through the forest. So this just starts out as an et cetera tag. So et cetera is that thick board um, from Stampers Anonymous. Here you can see the background. This is an ideology backdrop, that beautiful paper there. And then there's some remnant rubs. Gosh, I love seeing the rubs coming back. Some crackle. There is that crackle 3D folder, just using that raised side, very cool. Then we've got the artsy leaves here. And then we've got, oh, see? Look at that. 
Kath and Zoe also use remnant rubs on there. I need to go find that remnant rub. That was years ago. I got to find that one because they're perfect for those little guys to have those faces. See? Well, if you don't yeah. find one here, Very you, cool. know, you can count on Yeah, I'm one. sure Zoe's got a stack <laughs> of them. Um, She's so house. She is. So here I love, again, the alphabet for trick or treat, but what a fun make, just incorporating those colors. And I love uh, the leaves kind of popping through. Just really, really good. Yeah, so she, has just cool. she does, see? Yeah. I, I probably do as well. I have to go out. I, I have like a whole little seasonal box of stuff. I don't, I don't <laughs> mind. I bought them all I love last that. week. I'll send you some. Oh, <laughs> yeah. As soon as you find they fit, you're like, oh, good. Yeah, see, that's one of those things like, had I have known, I should have designed a stamp. I just didn't think. That's really good. Beautiful. I know. Amazing. I agree. I agree, Jeanette. Just so many, so many cool, so many cool ideas. That's really the, the truth of it. All right. Then we have this one. So Emma created this one. So uh, the whole idea when it comes to making is, oh, and especially the designing part, it's, it's hard to edit, to be honest. It's like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this and you could do this and you could do this. And you've seen from the makes that the reality is you can do so many different things with the components in a die set. But having individual elements was also important because I think that especially for Halloween night, one of those characters I hope resonates with anyone that went out trick-or-treating as a kid, right? Whether you were kind of that, that, that creepy little sneaky uh, vampire guy, you know, like where he's creeping up on people or the wonderful witch or wizard, it could be either one, or just kind of the, the careless last minute costume of Pumpkinhead, which was usually me. You know, you were getting something around the house to make a costume and that's just what he reminds me of. I'm not that I wore a pumpkin head, but that's what it reminds me of. So seeing this make that Emma did, this is using an ideology uh, vignette tray, the small vignette tray, and using the outside of it. So the inside is where you can create something dimensional, but also just using it as a foundation, having that base piece so it stands up. Take a look at the detail of that hardware. There's a little texture hammer. So that's what the ideology texture hammer, if you haven't used yours yet, use it on cardstock and wood because it does give it such a cool effect. If you're covering it with paper, it gives it such a, a great vibe. But here you can see tapestry in all its glory, that multi-level tapestry. Then we've got, this is one of the et cetera facades. So it's the same uh, material that you've seen the tags use, but the facades are kind of these layered pieces with cutout windows. And then we've got some backdrop, but look at the detail that Emma added to that little witch. Just using some pencil, just to add those little illustrative details. I think that's so charming. And many pieces are layered. I just noticed that, that hat. So that's cut again. So it's cut multiple times, but you can see like the broom is underneath her. So she kind of kept her, uh, kept that broom on say layer one, and then for layer two and three, cut off the broom. So it's totally behind her and then cut another layer for the hat so the hat's on top. That is brilliant. That is very cool to see that silhouette cut so many times and pieced together to create that layered effect. Absolutely love it. And then we've got the, the creepy little gate coming around. That's again from the colorized graveyard that you'll see coming up. That's it's a little festooning, right, from Ideology. I wish this would have come back this year, but it didn't. Yeah, I really loved this stuff. That was that. That was trimmings, that was the whole fringe. I love seeing that for Halloween. And then little Hocus Pocus done on metallic. That is an alphanumeric, I think that's a type uppercase. Ideology tape, I mean, gosh, there's just so many details that you can kind of pull out. Look at this, look at this little medallion. So this is the vintage labels die from, I think chapter three last year. But look how she turned it into a medallion with that little spider from uh, the Big Frights and then a tack nail, fab. Just like, come on, so many, so many cool details. I absolutely love it. It's just so cool. Then Tifa created a whole nother story. Now, I don't know what's inside, but I know something is because I can kind of feel it. But again, take a look at the Halloween night. I love how um, she also layered that. Oh, look at that. Even like the collar. I love the pumpkin head on that one. Look at that. Oh, this is, this is fabric. That is fabric. So Natifa used abandoned, because I'm like, this? What it? She used abandoned fabric as the background. Look at that cool scene. That is a great use for that fabric uh, for Halloween. My gosh, Tifa, that is so cool. Um, there's a moon in the corner, a little hocus pocus going around, but I love how she added the fabric details and also the pen. Isn't that great how makers can just 
they can do similar things. And I know that they're not chatting going, what are you doing? I'm going to do that. I just think they just do. And um, they have such unique ideas in their own, in their own way. It's cool. But look at this, look at this envelope with all this yummy oxide, great colors, great background. Let's see what's inside, shall we? Let's see. Oh, oh, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. All right. So here we have, this is uh, just a cool layered tag. There is grip paste. So there is crypt. Look at how uh, Natifa just transformed that paper into just this chunky stone. Black sparkly glitter. That's distressed glitter. I love that Halloween glitter. I wish that would have come back this year, but it didn't. But I love that black glitter. Liza, hello, look at that. And then we've got, see, every time you see a black glitter, you just maybe just Liza. And then you can see uh, getting into colorize that graveyard. How cool these pieces are. You've seen these gate pieces used on a lot of things. Uh, Zoe used that little skull, but having that headstone, having it all come together, definitely it's like they're creeping into, you know, the cemetery. Cause did you ever do any of those scary things to kind of scare yourself on Halloween? Um, maybe they did, or maybe they're just trying to get by that, but inside locked is the hallowed spot. See, I could just make up a story. I'm not even sure if that's, that's it, but just take a look at this inspiration. So much inspiration right here. Uh, when you start seeing all of these, all of these great silhouettes, there's so, I don't even, there's no way I'm going to fit all this. So I'm going to have to do these in kind of two stages. I'll, I'll clear the deck each time. Um, because really they're just, I want you to see all the, all the fabulous details uh, of all of these. Look at those, those little tags that Juliana did, that big card uh, that Barbara did, Keisha, Emma Kath, like Natifa, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. I have to just hand this stuff off to Mario. Like you think when you see that, that Halloween night and you see the silhouette of those trick-or-treaters, you're like, I don't really know. And then you just, I don't know, how can you not? How can you not be inspired? Uh, if, you, if you loved Halloween and you went trick-or-treating, how are, like, how are you not inspired by the whole feeling? That's what this does. It resonates, it resonates a feeling between the moon and the bats and the words and like, it just, it's fabulous. It resonates a feeling. And that, that to me is what uh, creativity should do. Creativity resonates emotion. So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay. You are going, so going, good. Going. There's so much inspiration. So much. All right. We're, we're going to keep moving. We have a lot of inspiration still. I, I'm not even going to say we're in the home stretch. There's a lot of inspiration. So now we kind of go from, uh, you know, the silhouette of Halloween night. We get into a little bit of creep. So I'll talk about this one, the colorized graveyard. Uh, I really wanted a lot of different elements, obviously inspired by a uh, haunted mansion and just graveyards in general, because I think that there's a lot of great uh, elements and details. But the thing about this colorized, it's pretty easy to do, but you've got these great foundational pieces to make these uh, headstones and you can layer them. Uh, there's a cross element. There's also a skull. These are separate, so you don't have to put them on if you don't want to. Um, but because of these layers, it, it casts some great shadows. It allows you to light them up. It allows you to add grip paste, glow paste, any of that. You've got this cool gate piece. Uh, so you saw how like makers used it just to, to gate something in or how Emma used it to kind of twist and turn around something. And then one of my favorites, this kind of urn of the dead plant. And you'll see like some, some very clever use of, of this particular die as well. But Colorize just adds all of those details. It's, it's just, and again, the dies have the, the color layers and there is a visual graphic on uh, Sizzix YouTube channel. They always have that animation of how these pieces go together. So for any color eyes, if you're ever stumped about how it goes together, go check out those, uh, those videos on Sizzix YouTube. It, it's just an animation that just kind of shows you uh, how the pieces build, but very cool. So this one, uh, Anita created this pop-up card and I, it was because at first when I saw this, I'm like, okay, yeah, she used that little skull and she used crack, but hmm, this, this was done from the wood slice. So this again was an everyday die that we launched at the beginning of this year. It was that cool, uh, there's a couple of little wood discs, but it was this alphabet that looks carved. And I know that uh, Vicky did some stuff as well, but look how cool this is when you take that and create with uh, this crack. I told you it kind of looks like tree bark. It's very, very cool. So this right here, I'm trying to figure this, this is two layers. She cut through the first layer, the alphabet, 
and then glued it on the second layer, but then went in and added some coloring. So it looks like it's been carved out. That's what's cool about this font. So there again, if you're Halloween and you're into the creep, but you didn't get this die from the beginning of the year because you're like, oh, I don't want to do so-and-so plus so-and-so, like just that font for anything wood is very cool and definitely has a creep factor. I love, I love seeing that whole wood slice look brought in. But then you open it and there's a scene. Like, look at that. And this, like, this hits all the senses, okay? Besides you have pop-up, you got one of those little thingers, those little wobbly bits, right? So you've got, wobbly bits. yeah, <laughs> that, the little, the little Springer thinger. So the cool thing about uh, having this platform is that you can create a fun scene. And I love, oh, there's the dots. I just noted, I just noticed that, like all the little eyes peeking through these holes. Yeah, like Star Wars fans are like little Jawa eyes that kind of coming through. Um, but you can see that this is the layer dots that Anita created. And then there are, there are the slices. I'm reading this, it cracks me up because that also is a remnant rub. I need a shovel. Well played, Anita. Good one to use that. Um, I love that little skull creeping over the back. So see that, that cross in the skull that I was telling you about? You don't have to put it on the front. You can have it coming out of the top if you want to use it or not use it as, at all. But I love how he's kind of creeping over and she used what looks like these little, the, the grass pieces from the urn, kind of like little arms creeping over. Then we've got uh, the fence back there. Again, the other urn, that little moon, little bats. So good in all ideology. And then a stamp there with some, looks like some beautiful pen work as well. I mean, that's, no, that's a remnant rub. Look, it just, it just caught my eye right there. See, look at that. That looks like a remnant rub. Fabulous. So good, right? Fun, 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 fun. Boing. Cool, love that. Great card, just so much inspiration. And you'll see there's, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of creep to be had. Um, Barbara created this, this does, this set, this colorized graveyard allows you to get your creep on. So here, uh, these are creepy eyes from Ideology. These have not been back and I miss these so much, but I do have quite the stack but I love how it's glazed. It's got glossy accents over it. So it really has that creep factor uh, on this card. And Barbara used a lot of different embossing folders and powders on these to really give this whole piece texture. These pieces right here, this was from uh, the Halloween vault series last year that we did, where we brought back those extra little uh, gravestones. I think it was from the original village. So I love how they pair really well with this colorize. Again, about that perspective. There's the gate, little ideology right there. There's the skull and the cross used. And then not only did she use that beautiful moon, but these little weird clouds. So these aren't the Edison clouds. These are kind of like more misty smoke. This is from uh, the Ghost Town dies where there, I think there was Ghost Town one and two that had like these weird little cloudy outlines. I love how they pair really well with moonlight. So if you have that set and you have those, those cool clouds, they work really well with the moon. So I love that. Great, great details. Just a lot of texture and a lot of fun color that Barbara uses. I, I do love, I love the ideas of all that. I love the moon. So you can also get your creep on. This is just a, a little et cetera tag. This is a number eight et cetera tag. Again, using that background that I shared last week with the, the cracked where it has a great wood grain. I took some of the colorized pieces. I just used the pieces that I did for packaging. There's a little Edison moon right there, a little gate. And this, of course, one of the die cuts of Bold Frights. But I wanted to create these pieces because I think when you do et cetera, you can also put in some tiny lights. So we always do color tiny lights. So here's uh, just some purple tiny lights that I did. Just easy to drill a hole through. And then I just wrapped it around and then did some foam. So it does give it a cool little eerie, creepy effect. And I added just a hinge clip. So if you ever want to display one of the tags, it's a great way that you could then just hang it on the wall from the clip or you could stand it up, make an easel, flower frog, any of that stuff. But yeah, I just think that tiny lights for the win. And we only do purple and green um, at Halloween. And I think that this is almost like a black light effect. This might be good for uh, the grit paste glow when we were talking about that last, but isn't that, it's just fun. So sometimes you think tiny lights have to be this big thing, this big box or a big vase or a glass dome or it, it doesn't, it just, this is one of those things where you just have to create some depth with a couple pieces of foam tape and uh, you're off, you're off to the races. So there we go. A lot of fun. And 
inspiration. I mean, I, I wasn't the only maker that did tiny lights. Zoe with a Y also created this little cemetery. I'm going to turn these on. So she used just some clear ones. So see those little lights that kind of pop on like little, little lights peeking through here and there, a little one in the moon. So you can do tiny lights on that same thing. And it's set a tag. This, I love all of the, the detail using Crip Paste. Grip Paste Crypt has all that yummy texture. There's the skulls. And again, see these urns, aren't they just, they're fabulous. That, just that creepy grass in the gate. They're the little bats. But yeah, it's fun just to have those little lights because it would make a, a great little, I'm going to turn those on again, a great little nightlight because see, just has a little bit of a glow to it. Some, some backlight behind uh, the tombstone so they would light up. So you, you definitely have creative options when it comes to, to working with these pieces. Love the detail. It does. It allows you to really get, really get your creep on. Even for Paula. Paul, I, I know Paula loves making for Halloween and so getting your creep on is, is what it's all about. So here again, this is an et cetera tag. This is just a little bit, is a larger one. I love the background that Paula created using that reptile folder, but see how it just, it creates the perfect effect because she kept it mostly black. So you have that great texture, but then some, just some splatters of mica stain just gave it that cool starry night. Then we've got the clouds from Edison. We've got the moon and the bats from Big Frights. Then we've got these pieces from the colorized graveyard. We have an ideology paper doll tinted perfectly with that wonderful mask from ideology stickers. We've got the urn. Then we've got some et cetera trim pieces and it says there seemed no possible escape. And I love all these bones kind of buried underground uh, in, in the graveyard. But here's another thing. I love how Paula used the, the gate pieces and the skulls and the urn, but not the tombstone. So if the tombstones or the headstones, if they kind of freak your freak, there's still great elements that you can use without that. But I love how it, uh, she spun it into a story with all of those bones just to create the perfect little Halloween night uh, scene. Cool, huh? It's so good. I agree. It's creepy, creepy cool. Yeah, those raised clouds. It's just, I'm so glad we did the clouds. I, I honestly, I almost regretted it because I'm like, it seems so weird to put clouds with a pumpkin. But after seeing the makes, I know I made the right decision. I know that Lisa and I were like, we stuck to it. We were going to do it. Uh, so Emma created this. This is a, an et cetera tag as a foundation. And then these bats, these are et cetera uh, trims because we do them uh, in bats and webs. So all of, I'll just say the, the foundation work, the frames, that's all uh, et cetera. But take a look at how she uh, created this whole assemblage piece to highlight the dies. So here you have that great background, a little bit of stamping, some beautiful colors. And then there is that wonderful moonlight that big moon, we've got the bats kind of flying up. And then there we have uh, our, our graveyard. I love how, again, those elements, they can build from the top. You can add the skulls, you can do paint, you can do uh, a little grip paste crip. But take a look at these, uh, how she did the urn. So here, instead of creating like the grass that comes out from the dyes, she filled it with moss, she filled it with little ideology uh, bouquet flowers. So these are inkable flowers, uh, little bits of grass. And then look at this busted one. Totally inspired when Tammy B smashes stuff for her makes. You see when she does her uh, haunted makes. I love how Emma like just took that, cut it, and kind of created that broken or smashed urn. Some bones, those are from ideology as well. So you can mix and match all of your pieces. And then we've got the haunted and, of course, some hardware heads. But uh, really great depth and dimension. All the little moss and, and grass and twigs and mm, so much good uh, coming out of that. And that little skull and crossbone, little ideology. One of my favorite, one of my favorite charms. So isn't that cool? Great job. Emma. I look, I just, you, you see the whole cemetery and you think, eh, what do you do with it? And everybody has, everybody has a story. Everybody has a whole different story. So Stacy created this. So this is, this is a vignette. So this is a, a divided drawer. It comes with little dividers, but it, it creates, you don't have to use them that way. Obviously the dividers come out but it does create a very cool foundation, almost like a sewing machine drawer or a cheese box, if you like that, that linear effect. So this is from Ideology, that wood box, but take a look at the detail. The amount of detail and texture and layers that Stacy puts in is like, I mean, my gosh. So just the box, that's been covered with the cracked 3D folder to really make it look like old wood. Then we've got this fence that wraps around that's all metallic. I'm guessing it's got some foundry wax on it because it's got just this wonderful metallic finish and texture. 
moss kind of glued them. We've got this great branch, that twig, a <laughs> stick, and it wraps all the way around. So even on the back, we've got that urn that kind of comes around. Uh, love you to the moon and back. Isn't that, it's, and just all of that creepy drip going up, up that background. Like just the amount of color and in ink is just so, so good. Then a little sewing on here. So sewing on paper, I was thinking is great, but when you have a textured paper, it really kind of messes with your mind because you're like, how is it, how are you sewing through wood? But it isn't, it's on paper, but it looks like it. But all that ribbon and just how it's all sewn and tattered, that's the whole Halloween. But then we have in here, we've got this guy. We got Mr. Bones that he was from, I think it was last year. He's either last year or the year before. Um, he's a favorite. I, I love how he just kind of jumps up out of the ground uh, you got those, just taking those extra hands and kind of pulling this guy up from the ground. And look at all that mossy cavern that she created down here, that little tattered lace. But then in the back, there is our colorized graveyard. You see the tombstones coming up, and then we have the moon. Hence the whole love you to the moon and back, where he is, he's pulling up his beloved from the ground just to, it's, I think it's so, it's just so cool. It's wicked, wicked fun. The stories that, that makers dream up from whatever that is, you know, whether, whether the, the moon was the catalyst, whether the gate, I mean, you don't, you don't know what does, but it's really, really cool just to, to, to have that whole story. And there's one of the dividers that's left in that, that box. So just remove one. Isn't that so cool? The detail is just wow, Stacy, like, wow. <laughs> All right, what do you say other than wow? You could say eek. eek. Yeah, Mario would say eek. He'll be saying that the rest of the day. So here we have, Vicky created this. Uh, this is an ideology of reliquary dome. So these are the new domes we did this year. I love this shape um, because it's arched and it's flat. So it really gives you a beautiful visible surface. She's got tiny lights in there. If you're gonna display it, tiny lights are very easy to hide. They're tiny. It's a flat pack uh, that uh, has that switch, but you can see the moon lit up. So I love how uh, Vicky used both moon circles, if you will, but then only used the detail layer on the top and then sandwich the tiny lights in between those layers. So it really does cast, look at that, my hand, such a beautiful glow. And then she used just those elements of the gate, many gate pieces wrapped around. She's got just kind of that grassy stuff just coming up out of the ground. So you don't have to use the urn. You don't have to use the tombstone. That's the beauty of the makes is to uh, kind of give you that inspiration. It says the silence out of the hollow. Isn't that, it's just good. I think we're going to need a sound effect button for Mario to be like, eek. That, I think that's what I did, but he, he still has two more weeks of it. Um, it's, isn't it? It's so, it's so cool just to dream up the ideas. And again, whether it's glass, whether it's a box, whether it's a card, um, I just love seeing how ideas can really tell a story. Doesn't matter what, what they're making, it's gonna tell a story. Sure. We've got a lot of stuff to, to, I'm gonna put this stuff in because I still have one more make, but I uh, just wanna kind of put a lot of this stuff in just to show you uh, all the different ideas for, for these. It's so cool, all these pieces. We got this guy, yeah, we got bones right there. That's good, beautiful, that little, I love that. I love, see, paper dolls, a lot of people did paper dolls, so I'm, I'm glad to see that. Uh, Paula incorporated paper dolls. I, I don't know. I just, I find it super fun just to, just to add different, different elements, different parts, different pieces, different ideas, uh, and seeing the elements of, of the colorized graveyard just used different ways, right? Boxes, tags, cards, pop-ups, light up, not light up with paper dolls as a scene with the moon, uh, in the glass, just just tell your story with those pieces. And often you can just look and dismiss something right away because of maybe the scene that I, I did for the front. But then when you look at the individual elements, you're like, oh, that's fun. Oh, that's fun. Oh, I just like the gate of that. Great. If you, if you like a couple elements, it's certainly enough just to kind of uh, go in and, and do what you want to do what inspires. So there we go, Mario, hand those off. Thank you. I love the lights on if you want to yeah, flip those switches. No Thank you. Okay, so we do have another make, but it's big, so I wanted to, and not just one make in general, just one more make for this particular release. And you know if I have to clear the deck for a make, it's probably going to be Tammy B, because, well, Tammy B is a storyteller. So take a look at this ideology vignette tray. First of all, 
it's the wallpaper. And if you're a fan of Haunted Mansion, you totally get it. But this, this is what I was showing you. This is like the reverse side where, uh, you know, rubbing the ink over the top when you use the back of it because you have more kind of puffy surface. But look at how she created this wonderful Haunted Mansion inspired wallpaper. But this scene, guys, this scene, it all lights up. But if you've been on the attraction, this is a very familiar scene. Uh, and I love the, the different dyes that she used. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, come on. So here we've got from Halloween night. So she's just kind of sitting up there with a little dye. And again, full detail because it was like, oh my gosh, so black heavy stock tapestry inspired by Haunted Mansion, yes. But inside, of course, we have those clouds. Those clouds are gonna be from Edison. Then we have, of course, this colorized graveyard and we have all these great tombstone pieces then we have all these urns the gate just kind of winding around in the back and then we've got this tomb and again it's one of those scenes where i he's actually i think kind of bricking himself into the tomb he's not trying to get out he's getting himself in but the other characters so i recognize those from halloween night but these guys if you don't re recognize those guys It'd be this from this year uh, when we did the gentleman. I think they're perfect for spirits, for ghosts. Uh, and how Tammy just inked those a beautiful bluey, ghostly ink. How she just used the arms and used like the umbrella and the cane pieces. I mean, she she created the story, but she really stuck to. Um, I think what's amazing is she stuck to the dyes. You know, and like oh, I'm gonna paper cut this. She. She did it. She totally manipulated it. And I absolutely love it. That little sparkle that's from Celebrate. And then this piece right here, this whole kind of crypt, this is using, of course, crypt paste, but this is also using a, a facade. This is one of the et cetera facades, that arch that has that cutout. And then we've got all of these great brick pieces in there. I just think it's, it's so cool. This is the 3D. So this is a 3D embossing folder of brickwork. And this is the large and the mini. And I'm saying this because I'm totally reading her notes because I couldn't figure all this out. It's like my creative brain is overstimulated right now when I'm looking at this because of all the detail and of course my love for uh, that attraction and the fact that it lights up. But even down to the scale of the bricks by using both pieces and all of these, like these are hand cut and put in. So like Tammy embosses, if you follow her on social, you've seen some sneak peeks, but it's like she does the embossing, does her inking, cuts it out, sticks them down and then literally kind of like grouts in between them with grip paste crypt. So that whole little arch, those are individually glued down. And if you, if you love doing the detail stuff, well, there you go. Those are the results. You're happy you did it because you create set something absolutely magical, but pretty crazy to, to see that colorized uh, graveyard and be like, okay, I'm going to do a scene out of haunted mansion. Cool. I'm going to use this. I just so brilliant. So, so brilliant. Absolutely love it. All right, there you go, Mario. Thanks. Thanks. So we got one more. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up with Edison and show you some inspiring makes with Edison uh, in the home stretch. And Edison, he's a fun one. Um, I always try to do some sort of pumpkin or jack o' lantern um, with Halloween. We already know that I love the clouds from him, but he's just great. He's got some great personality. But what the makers did, just like, come on, come on. I'm gonna turn this one on because it's got some tiny lights. Um, so Kathy did this. I'm so glad that she lit him up. Look at that. This is what, this is what I, I envisioned from day one. But what I didn't envision is the fact that Edison's head would be on the Count's body. How crazy cool is that? So Kathy created this pumpkin head using Edison, and that is the Count, colorized from a previous year. And how perfect is that, his little body? And he is standing in the colorized graveyard. So good, so, so good. This is an ideology vignette shrine. These also have been retired, but you, it could be any shape as a foundational piece. Then we've got, I love uh, just that whole flourish. I'm not sure of the specific name. I don't know if this is flourish, tapestry, schoolwork, but uh, on metallic, I absolutely love that. Very elegant in metallic, but still has that great industrial hardware. But what's really magical is there was a note on this that Kathy said, there is a story about this. And so what she did is used the ideology clipping stickers, which are all cut from different books that Paula goes through and just cuts out random words. But when you pair them together and, and makers have done this in the past and it's always amazing just to kind of hear uh, the stories they dream of. So I've not read it, so I'm hoping I can read it. Um, 
So let's read it together, because I'll try to read here instead of through the camera. Uh, then suddenly a strange thing happened. A much misunderstood gentleman returned, watching and waiting. His troubled eyes looked a bit spooky and flickered as his deep voice echo echoed, Is something the matter? <laughs> That's awesome. Nothing is the matter. He's magic. That, see, just that, just creating your story and a hidden story. I think that's also very cool because you would see that and be like, that's great. And I don't know how many people would even bother to kind of read that. But when you do, it ties out, especially when he's like looked a bit spooky and flickered, like just so good because those little tiny lights, I mean, come on, it's so good. So good. So Edison, yes, Edison is just, he's a good one. He really is. Okay. Let's keep going with Edison because you're going to see some, some just wonderful ways that that we can incorporate him. So we've got a couple of cards. So Jen created this card, uh, Edison, and then using some older pumpkins and even some older dies, some older script dies. So again, you can use what you have. You can incorporate uh, whatever elements you want, but taking this, I love the little sparkle in there, uh, made a little pumpkin stack, and then we have trick or treat as a slimline card. So whether you're doing glazes, paste, ink, it's just it's a fun way that you can create uh, with Edison and create a pumpkin stack. Joy created this card. Look at that. It's got a little, little wobbly. And this has these little, I think these are little, I don't know, diamond painting dots or something. They're, they're little gems that are all stuck on here that just give him that little, that little texture, but also some really great weight. So you can just kind of move them this way. But I love the layered dots in the background. All of those colors popping through just makes for uh, a fun card. And there's different ways that we can incorporate uh, Edison for cards. And that to me is super important that if you like a certain medium or dot diamond painting, um, yeah, they're cute. They're very cute. They have a great little sparkle to them, but you can utilize your dies to whatever your making style is. You should never be intimidated or overwhelmed by anything you see in the lives the makers make to their style to inspire you. Even if it's just a single idea and not even the whole finished project, that's what it's all about. So I love seeing that makers just do what they do. That's, that's what it's all about. So Juliana created uh, this. This is a banner that she created with Edison. And I think that that's really cool. Um, so let me just try to open it up. Take a look at this. I know I can't get it all in camera at once, but I'll just kind of turn it the best I can. So she created this banner ribbon. So obviously you can hang that up. But all of these panels, we start with tapestry background. We've got Edison. And then again, the hat and the tie. Love seeing this die used with Edison as well. It's a really great scale. Really great, Juliana. Um, love seeing that. Then we've got Eek with the little moon and the bats. Mario's sound effect is broken. I even said Eek and he's just like, he's over it now. Um, then we've got Edison with the top hat and again, the bow tie. Then we have Boo with that skull and crossbones and then another Edison with the straw hat. So she used like the different details from that die set, all of those hats and then the ties. So charming, so, so fun. And really what a, what a great idea just to take your dies. And if you want to decorate for Halloween, create this, or these could be cards. If you're not into decorating for Halloween, you can just sit down and make these again, repetition, do all your backgrounds, ink the folder, and then just rub your ink pad over the top and then spray it with a little water. And that's what's going to get kind of that cool little inky drip. And then just make your pieces. Edison, he is, he is a quick, quick make. He really is easy to do, um, but you can take him to whatever level you want when it comes to, to working with him. Very, very cool. I love it. I love how they, they pop over, over that textured background. All right. Take that. Then we've got uh, some party. We have a little bit of party. Let's, br let's bring on the party, shall we? Because, you know, Halloween is all about time to party. So there's a lot of ideas for party. So Stacy created this. And I think it's a, a cute idea for Edison. And that is to make, make a card. So you can take a piece of cardstock and fold it. And then when you run it through, make sure the fold is inside the blade. So your base layer of Edison is going to be the entire pumpkin. So if you take a piece of cardstock and fold it first and lay it down so the fold is on the inside of that outer edge, it'll cut and, and keep the fold. And that's gonna give you your background, that's the black layer. And then you just add those other pieces, those kind of inside and outside, which is designed to create that drop shadow. 
but it's a great thing again for a party you can take this and you can stand it up at a place setting and put somebody's name or you can attach it to little treat things and Stacy, I hope you like this because Stacy sent these and uh, last night I said to Mario, I'm like, these would be really cute on these buckets that I got, these little cauldrons. So I just kind of took her idea and just, because, you know, if it includes candy, I'm on it. So these I picked up at the dollar store. These were just little plastic cauldrons and took a little cello bag, put some candy corn in it, a little bit of black tool, and then tied on that card. So what's really great about the idea of creating uh, little cards is that you can make treats. You can make treats for friends, for neighbors, coworkers, whatever, put in their favorite little uh, candies in something. And often sometimes you think like, well, I don't normally make cards or, you know, what do I do with this if I'm not hosting a party? Hopefully the idea of it is just all about finding things and, and getting them when you see them, never knowing what you do with them. That's the true mind of a maker, but then adding a little adding a little treat I think is really great. And if you're doing a party, then definitely get yourself uh, an old silver tray to serve them on because, well, presentation is everything, right? I do love that. So great idea, Stacy. I love the idea of uh, just Edison being the card. Didn't have to go on something. He was the card uh, all on his own. And I love just seeing that black layer because I think it really made his expression pop. It's, it's hilarious. I think it's really, really cute. Just a, a great idea for that. And then we have uh, Debbie. So Debbie Adams, I worked with Debbie uh, when I first started with Sizzix. She was uh, in the creative department. And I don't think I've ever met anyone. I've been so inspired in the die cut world as Debbie. And uh, we're so lucky for her to still make for Sizzix. Uh, well, my line for Sizzix. She doesn't work for Sizzix, but she makes for uh, my Sizzix collection. And so thank you, Debbie, for still, still making because her use of dyes and her use of color is like it's been like this since like day one it's, it's unbelievable she's very much into parties and scenes she does a lot of wedding stuff now so definitely check her out for for inspiration but take a look at the colors she chose for edison and i'll just leave this here for a second big frights a pink pumpkin i mean come on pink so so cute but a lot of different layers so we'll start with this, just decorating a noisemaker, taking this and making a shakety shake out of Edison. So he's got just some of that great confetti in there, but he's got pink and just look at the inking, right? Not a traditional orange pumpkin, pink, yellow, uh, some peach, and then just how she did that blend on the words. So whether you want it to look like candy corn, whether you want it to look anything, I just love the ink blend going across because that word is big enough that you can do that. And then just other details. This is a, a little spiderweb die. So if you have any spiderweb dies, this is a great uh, use for that. One of my favorite dies. But I love just the, the fun whimsy of it. You go off the page. So here, the background, you can see there's that layer dots. And that's just done in pink and white. But you don't have to layer it on everything if you don't want. There's a little googly eye I just noticed in there. It's really cute. But pink and white. Then we've got Boo. We got a pink spider with a little pen work. We've got a little star. We've got a witch hat. That's, uh, I'm guessing that's from, I think that might've been from the vault last year, the Halloween vault. It's one of the dies that I, I did. There's that skull, but you can see that skull is done with a plaid. So that was one of the, the plaid dies that we've done years past. And that spider web, that's a die, one of my favorites. That's actually still available. That was years ago, but it's such a good seller that uh, it's part of their everyday line or their essential line, which is cool. Then we've got the candy corn, little bone. But how fun is, is just seeing those in that palette? Just, it's the details. That's what I was saying about it's Debbie. Really like, super festive party. she uses so many dyes. That's what, like, I remember when I would go and visit Sizzix. Remember, I would spend so much time in the art room just be like, what are you making? And it's, it's almost like a game of like, how many dyes can she incorporate into like one die? But like, that was, that was a job. That was like, you know, here's, here's a card that uses 40 dyes. Because, I mean, you don't have to, but it's pretty wild, right? And then she had this idea. And again, I, I took what she did and she asked Paula, like, should I send this? She wanted to make a charcuterie board. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. I got you covered. <laughs> so I was more than happy to create this charcuterie board, Halloween style with candy. It's got my favorite, rock candy. Freaking love rock candy. Absolutely. As a kid, it's always been my favorite. And it's a wooden stick, so I can totally do it. And then you could play the drums afterwards if you eat two of them. Just note for the five-year-old in you. 
Um, I love it. Blue would be my favorite because it makes your mouth blue, but I love them for Halloween. Then I love peanut kisses because these are, this is that disgusting stuff that nobody wanted, but as a kid, I was the one that would trade uh, my brother and sister for these. Yeah. I wanted these. They're, all, they're always done in wax paper. You and know how expensive those are now? They are now, but, but back then nobody wanted them. And I'm like, you can have my Three Musketeer and my Snicker and my Milk Duds, but I want these. I still love them today. Reese's Pieces because it's a perfect for a fall. Candy corn. And then also some C's lollipops because, well, yummy C's. But this is really what Debbie made. So take a look at how cute this is. Charbuterie. Come on. Uh -huh. Come on. On a straw, a paper straw is the foundation for this make. And then how she used all of the little elements. We've got Edison in all his just, he's just so happy. He's so happy he's with so his happy. teeth and you could see his teeth. He ate a lot of candy. And so I admire him for that. And then we've got those spider webs cut twice and then offset. We've got bat dye. So I love the bat wings behind uh, Edison, the skull and crossbones, but this is just brilliant. Charbuterie, candy corner, tricks and treats, finger licking good, and just charming. And I love how she used the little dots as like little pumpkins growing up out of the ground that she did, but all done on a paper straw. That is brilliant. And then in here, this is just, this is just a flower frog. You can buy these still at the craft store, um, but I'll just take this off. It's a weighted metal and it has all these little spikes. Use it for flowers. And because Debbie does flowers, um, that would make sense that she does that. Uh, but the great thing about something like that is it's weighted and then the straw just kind of sticks right into those spikes. So that stands up and then you have everything together. So, I mean, you talk about charming like that. That is brilliant. That whole party thing is absolutely just brilliant. And I think the idea of making for Halloween, whether you're, you know, whether you're making for yourself, whether you have parties or this is your own party. We don't host Halloween parties, but this is my party and I'm, I'm happy to be here. So I, because I do love, I love it. So this, this was Sizzix Halloween. Pretty amazing.